Welcome to Sports Card Culture Podcast number 12? 12. 12. Yes, Evan. The producer has verified it's number 12. January 18th, 2021. Man, that's weird to say, 2021. We're getting there, man. Here we are. And by the way, uh, today we got our 250th subscriber. Nice. So I was happy to see that. Uh, this make sure weekend. You, make sure if you're listening and you haven't subscribed, subscribe so we can start going live. We Absolutely. Get you guys more content. Um, so right before we start the podcast, uh, Clint is going on a trip to Vegas this weekend. Yes. And I said, hey, let's uh, talk about the trip a little bit, but let's really so talk about Vegas, what we should bet on. Vegas is desperate for people. So right now they're basically sending you free rooms and comped everything if you'll come What's do your anything there. total cost for the weekend? My total cost is $94 for a plane ticket. So <laughs> like, we got two free. Oh, and then you were comped we got, for that. We got three free nights that are about 200 bucks a night plus 150 in free play and basically everything you can eat and drink and, you know. So anyway, uh, yeah, Vegas is going to be fun. I mean, obviously it's a big weekend for football. Um, I actually like this weekend in some ways more than the Super Bowl because you actually have two games, you know, yeah. four of the best teams. Um, interesting spot without Mahomes. Man, I hope Mahomes plays. I mean, what a literally you have in both divisions, you have the best of the old school mm-hmm. and new school quarterbacks, right? You have the up and coming, yep. you have Mahomes, and then you have kind of his younger protege, maybe the next possible MVP in Josh Allen, and then you got – Brady and Rodgers kind of reemerging. I think Rodgers should be the MVP the old for the year. The new? It's old versus new in NFC, AFC. So, I mean, it's. We're going to get old versus new no matter what, then. I mean, yeah. We I didn't got, think about that. Yeah, we're going to get it either way. So, it's it's question is who. Right. And, you know, I mean, it would be weird to see Rodgers Allen. That would be the most unlikely, I think, prior to the playoffs, like in my mind. Well, I think I said a couple podcasts ago, I thought it was going to be uh, Bucks Bills. Did you? Yeah. I, and Bucks some of that is just, I hate the Packers so much. Yeah, so. it's hard to even, like. It's hard to it's hard to make an honest assessment when the Packers are involved, right? Um, so a couple good games. Obviously, it was fun to see Breeze Brady. I mean, I don't know if you watched after the game, but oh, like just listen the mutual to what happened. Listen to what happened. Yeah. So I w- I watched the first game. I'm in the shop because I'm always at the shop, and I'm watching the first game. Watch the first game. Talking about that hit on Mahomes. Mm-hmm. So I thought that linebacker was the way it looked like he was pulling on his head. He was trying mm-hmm. to hurt him. Yeah, that's the way I thought. Um, he says like he's never been a dirty player and he didn't try to do anything. And I said, well, there's got to be something wrong with his neck or his shoulder. It's not a concussion because like you watch the hit and it's like, well, he didn't really hit his, his head. His head did hit the ground, but it was, it right, was more wrenching on his effect, neck. Right. Yeah. And no, that can give you a concussion. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Right. Um, but then he's like running off the field and stuff. And um, so it turns out today the last I heard was it was a nerve in his neck. It really. Was, but because he was staggering, he had to go through concussion protocol. So it looks like he probably will play, unless it's some serious unless, issue. Unless he can't yeah. move his neck. Unless there's some major neck. Because he's only got a week. For, I mean, like, have like, you ever ranked your neck? I mean, it takes All I can say is the <clears throat> NFL will do everything they can to he's make gonna sure He's going to get he, a shot in the neck. He no is going to pass <laughs> concussion protocol for sure. I mean, it's like. Well, I don't think he had a concussion. Yeah. I don't think anybody thinks he had a concussion. Yeah, I mean. I was impressed. Chad Henney came in and made a couple hey, plays, and yeah, you know, no doubt, Baker played well. I mean, I, the Browns got to feel good about the direction they're you know moving. Obviously, they, they yeah, the Browns well fans I think will be hyped for next year. Yeah, yeah, they got they got some good stuff. I mean, obviously Brady's the goat of goats, and he just the goat he just can't of goats. So, I mean, uh, tell us what you think Brady's motivation is to get that seventh ring. Well, I mean, we were just talking about it. And I think. I think in the back of his mind, Jordan's got six, so they're tied. And so this kind of puts him in a league of his own across all sports. You know? And Jordan can't ever Jordan come back out of retirement. I don't think Jordan's going to come back and beat Kevin Durant right now or anybody. In the well, although, you know, I mean, I bet you Jordan probably could join the net and get his seven to tie up Brady and say what's up. Yeah, the problem is he's not really <laughs> – he won't be contributing as much. So. No, I've been play ring the ring, right? So, I mean, as you were talking uh, betting lines. Yeah. So uh, I just made – I just gave Clint 20 bucks. To bet on the Bills money line, explain yep. money so line. So money money line is you're betting the winner, and obviously right now the Bills are plus one twenty, which means if you put a hundred dollars on the Bills to win, you'll win one twenty. Right. And then uh, the Chiefs are minus one forty. So if you bet a, if you you have to bet one forty to win one hundred okay. on the Chiefs. So right now the Chiefs are a three point favorite or two and a half point. They actually moved a half a point um, just recently. So. Obviously, the money is coming in on the Bills. So I'm, that tells I, you I right think now the Bills the are going to win proper, well, so I'm definitely yeah. the bet for me. Well, and it's also smart because 
we don't know if Mahomes is playing. And yeah, if he's true. not, that line could literally move to the Bills being a favorite. So getting yeah. your money in right now on the Bills without the, with the uncertainty of Mahomes, I think, is a good yeah. value. You know, what I absolutely. Mean? Because I think they're going to win even if Mahomes plays. So. I think they could win. I, I I'm. I think it's going to be a good game. I hope we have a couple of good games. I mean, yeah. I, how, how exciting is this? Did you know it's the first time the Packers have ever hosted an NFC Championship game at Lambeau? Is what I heard this weekend. Yeah, that makes sense because in the 90s, um, when they were going to playoffs all the yep. time, the Vikings and the Packers were always like 9-7, and 10-6, and, and that's yep. not going to get you So ne- they never had the one seed. Yep. And so but. they've won some NFC Championship games on the road, but they've never – which, to be honest – it's kind of the table set for Tom. It's like, what hasn't Tom done? Right. He hasn't gone to Lambeau and won an NFC championship. Well, he's like, I might as well add that to my resume. I mean, <laughs> I, what, what other challenges could I have? Could I beat the, you know, probably. Oh, Rodgers prob- can probably, probably be the MVP. The, yeah, he should be the MVP. No. And then he'll go beat Ma- uh, Mahomes, who's last year's MVP. I mean. I can like, I'll beat all the MVPs. But he's like, I can, I can show you guys how it's done. Evan, Evan, uh, not a big Brady fan this year. I mean, I, I and I also we were talking about this. I also am cheering for the Bucks because there's two Minnesota Gophers starting. Oh yeah. Well, not uh, Tyler Johnson doesn't start, but he got some. No, I mean he he's good in the game. And right? then Winfield yeah. on defense and so. I mean, a yeah. third on wide receiver. Is, well, would he be like maybe the fourth? Receiver? Yeah, yeah, he's the yeah. fourth guy. Because uh, Scotty Miller. And if Brown's out. Third. Yep. And I mean, Winfield mm-hmm. made a post about uh, you know this one's for my dad from the 09, revenging the 09 Oh yeah, there you go. I like that. A little motivation. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Motivation. So what is uh? Tampa Green Bay. Yep. Then. So Tampa right right now Green Bay is a, a three and a half point favorite. Uh, Green so they're, Bay. They're minus oh 190. man, I might have to give you another twenty bucks. And then the Bucks are so the Bucks are plus one sixty, meaning if you bet a hundred on the money line for the Bucks to win, you're going to win one sixty. So what do I make on twenty bucks? Um, on the Tampa money line. On Tampa money line. Uh, let me tell you right now. Tampa money line. Before I find out, I'm going to give you twenty bucks right now. What's another up? twenty. Let's twenty go. twenty, man. I'm going to. I'm going to go underdog both uh, ways. 20 wins, 32. There you go. So, Here's yep. the making 50 bucks. So, literally, if you win one of them, you're going to minimize your loss to oh, uh, fair enough. pretty much, you know. Like 8 bucks yeah, or, yeah. So whatever, literally you, or 12 bucks. Yeah, you have a chance. I mean, if you lose both, I'd be pretty I'm going to win both. It's going to be bucks. Win them both. And uh, both. That'd be interesting. You know, I, that's somebody to keep your, uh, an eye on price-wise, obviously, Josh Allen this week. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Bills – we were just talking about this. They have a, a very loyal fan base. Right. They've ne- I actually have a customer in the shop who literally told me when they won last week, not not this week, but the week before, he said he was, like, literally in tears because they haven't had a playoff win in right, since 95. Right. He was, like, seven years old or six years. You know what I mean? Like, literally, they're, like, this After is the amazing. four. So we, so we don't know where they're at as far as collecting cards yet, but I, I, we are seeing, obviously. So what are, what are some players that you think? I'm The first one jumped to mind is if the Packers win MVP and Super Bowl champion one year and Rodgers. You're going to see that go in the stratosphere. So, Rodgers, if he moves into the two Super Bowl class, yeah. he he joins an elite group. Um, and, right, and winning MVP the same year. Right, same year. If I that mean, happens. I mean, right now you only have four guys ever who have won more than two Super Bowls. Hmm. Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, yeah. Troy Aikman, and yeah, Brady. Yuck. And th- think about this for a Who's second. Who's the last one? Brady. Brady, okay. So, Brady, I don't know if you know this, Tom Brady – has more Super Bowl wins than every NFL organization <laughs> outside of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who also have six. So he's tied. Wow. So literally, so if he, if he wins, wins one, he'll, he'll be... have more than any single organization in their history. So any any player and any organization. And any organization. And thank, he beat Jordan. Thank you very much. And yes. he'll beat Jordan. He's the GOAT. Now here's the thing. The next podcast, I don't, I don't know who I – I haven't made any uh, – Decisions on who I think would win against sure. Bill Bucks. No, let me say this. That's going to be a tough one. We were, we were talking about Brady as it's related to cards. Now, you're not buying him. Obviously, he's not a penny stock anymore. No. You're buying him. He's Amazon. There's no downside and only upside. I think right? Amazon is a good comp for that because it's a blue chip that still can grow. Still can grow. Significantly. And one of the reasons it's going to grow well, it's is not tw- cult. 20 years from now. So, Mantle... Continued mm-hmm. to grow even after he retired. Like right. his legend value and legend, Babe Ruth the same way. Jordan's doing the same thing. Right. Brady's that guy. And 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 you can argue Mantle wasn't even the best player. He was just top five and a Yankee. And a Yankee yeah. at the right time when cards were back right. getting started. And you know, because you, know, you could argue Willie Mays. Yeah, Willie Mays is a better player. Unfortunately, he doesn't sell as well because he was not right. in the right location and. 
I mean, there may be something to do with race in there, too. I yeah, mean, maybe. Just, I think people maybe. subconsciously are collecting Mantle because they're not, like, not collecting Maze, but it's like, oh, he's... Well, you know. there was a discussion on Blowout. So when did... Uh, when was Andrew Luck and Russell Wilson drafted? 2012. 2012. Okay, so yep. there was a discussion maybe 2016. And by the way, the admins yep. shut it down like a bunch of pansies. I had to go through my Rolodex of words that I could say. Like a bunch of pansies because we were talking about that. I was saying who was better, Luck or, or Russell Wilson. And I was right. saying, well, Russell Wilson better. He is better. Absolutely. This was in 20, yeah, back then, 2015. Yeah. Yep, yep. I was saying he was better. But luck cards are going to be worth more, and then um, and part of his luck was this can't miss well, prospect. Well, but that, part of it was yeah. he was a white quarterback, yep. and I said there's nothing wrong with identifying with somebody who looks like you. Right. You're not saying I hate the other guy. It's no different than Jeremy Lin when he played Absolutely. well. He exploded, Absolutely. and all the collectors in Asia no, obviously right. gravitated towards you know. Now Ikiro yeah. is a monster. Yeah. But he, and, and and I don't know how much less he would be worth. He'd be, be worth a little less yeah. if it wasn't for the Japanese buyers sure. and the Chinese buyers. Yeah, and, and I don't they, know Chinese buyers. I mean, them, but. Japan is a huge yeah, card baseball collector. country. Yeah. And the, they, I feel like they actually like baseball more than the U.S. now. I feel like they've yeah, surpassed like, maybe. The, the, well, in terms the fan of, base. And the, yeah, by a, like a per capita. And, and, and like the, the baseball players in Japan are like celebrities in a way that like they're not. Right. Baseball players here are like – Right, right there with the NHL. But the so point being, I think you're right. I think well, okay. I think Mantle gets that yeah. prestige. I think that's part of it. Yep. But but I mean, I think him and, being a Yankee has way more to do with it. But and you know what else is interesting? Think about the guys that we've talked about in baseball. Mays and him, they all played like center field. Yeah. Or oh, yeah. like very rarely, like shortstop. you have a killer brew playing first, but you either have shortstop or center fielders, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Griffey, Jeter. You know. And then there's always that one weird, you know, the random catcher once every. 18 years becomes the catcher. Yeah, give me your top few catchers. So it's like Yogi Berra, then Johnny Bench. Yep. Then I don't know if we have him for the 90s. Well, I would say Ivan Rodriguez, but he, in collector wise, and I'd say care. if you're going to go back prior to Yogi, well, same era as Yogi. Carlton Fisk gets a lot of love. Roy Campanella, and then Fisk. Campanella, obviously. Yeah, died. Campanella he was in the Negro Leagues yeah. for a long time, too. Yeah. Yeah. And so he lost a lot of years in terms of MLB. And he was, and he was with the Dodgers, which was. Right, and that's a, big, that's yeah, a good yeah, deal. Yeah. Same, a, with, same with Barra. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's not yeah. a lot of catchers that are collectible, but the ones that are are very collectible. Um, obviously, you got Yadier Molina, I think. Uh, Yadier, I think, now the is, is the, is the uh, Yogi Berra. Yep. Because in the 90s, you have Piazza and you have Irod, and neither yep. one of them, they, they're collected, but not heavily. And it's interesting, Ru- Ivan Rodriguez was almost like – he was a better defensive yeah, oh, catcher than he was offensive, and so he was a good offensive. He was good, offensive. and honestly, you got to put Joe Mauer in there. Obviously, he's yeah. batting titles uh, of any. Well, catcher. who would you who would you who would you take uh, Piazza or Irod if you had to collect one? Oh, Piazza, Piazza as a collector. Collecting? Yeah, I think I've always been infatuated with Ivan Rodriguez, yeah. the, the throwing guys out from your knees. Because yeah, I played I played catcher when I was a kid, so yeah. I I like that position. Yeah, he was a beast. I mean. Mauer was a beast. Yeah, and Mauer. I mean, if Mauer doesn't, Mauer's sort of secondary. If Mauer doesn't get hurt and continues as a catcher, mm-hmm. he goes down as the best oh, yeah. hitting catcher all time for Absolutely. sure. I mean, you still could say average wise. Johnny he's the best. Bench. We'd have to look at stats. No, he's got way better. Oh, way really? Better batting average. Johnny Bench oh, wasn't yeah. as oh, good yeah. as Mauer. No, Bench had more power, but not nearly the average. Well, having more power than Joe Mauer yeah. is not a feat. <laughs> Well, but Maurer had like 30, 29 homers one year. <laughs> one year, yeah, yeah. like the year. So, so here's Bench's numbers. He he, Bench hit two sixty seven, two thousand oh. hits, three eighty nine home runs, thirteen seventy six ba- runs batted in. I think he's got Maurer on everything but batting average, though. No, no, I think Maurer's the same as hits. Yeah, I think hits are about right, but I would bet you RBI is a lot higher as well as home runs. Okay, so Maurer. Okay, so there's Bench Maurer. 306. Yeah. So he's all almost 20, all world almost 30 catcher. points ahead. He's got more hits, 21, 23. Oh, he does. Okay. 143 homers, so he's like half. He's getting killed, runs. yeah. And then runs back in, he's a couple, 300 behind, uh, 923. Yeah, he's not even 1,000. Six time All Star. Uh, batting average versus power. Yeah. No. And defensively, I don't. Th- I don't think uh, Johnny Bench was like way better than Mauer defensively. I think no, was, but Johnny Mauer's, Bench was a very good defensive he was good catcher. Defensive. Yeah. 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 But I think Maurer, in terms of defensive catcher, is probably maybe the best catcher ever. 
Yeah. In terms of a catcher. Yeah. He just didn't play long enough to really be considered a pure catcher for I mean, I love the fact that he beat out Derek Jeter for that. I, I love that, dude. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Anytime we can beat a Yankee in any way possible. The captain of the Yankees who plays shortstop, yeah. If we can beat him <laughs> out, we're, he, Mauer earned it, right? All right, let's cool. get into – so that, that so what's the uh, – I okay, yeah. we know my picks. I'm going money line on the underdogs. What are yep. you doing? So I like the – um, Bills Chiefs under at fifty <laughs> under fifty three. Okay. Um, two reasons. Oh, for, okay. One, Total if point. Mahomes doesn't play. Two, the Bills haven't scored that many points in the playoffs. Right. They have a decent defense, and like we talked about, when there's pressure in these big games, I feel like the coaches tend to be more conservative play mm-hmm. calling, especially if a team gets an early lead. I feel like they want to control the clock, run the right. ball. You're not going to see a lot of flea flickers. No, and, it, it yeah. leans towards the under. I think because right now I think that over is like. A healthy Mahomes. 50, 54 is 27 27. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be over that. Okay. I mean, I mean, we saw Tampa and and the Saints indoors yeah. n- not go over that. Okay. They were 50. So I think that an under is a great bet there. What else Tampa got? Green Bay, I, I don't like the over under at all. I like the Tampa money line and I like the I like the Bills to cover two and a half. Um, okay. I like it. But more you want to take money line. Half. You want to take money line. I don't mind the, the money line. I think there's value there. I kind I kind of want to wait to see what happens with Mahomes on that game. No. Other than the but if you game. wait to see, then the money line or the line's gonna move. It's gonna move. Yeah. No, one way or another. It's gonna move, and 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 I don't mind locking in some money on the Bills to win right now. Yeah. Because I think th- any news is almost in the Bills' favor, right? I mean, it, unless because like well, because worst case is Mahomes players, which. They're kind of the money. Right. When I look at the spread, they're already factoring that in. I mean, right. there's no way Kansas City's a favorite without Mahomes, so like right. th- that's already built in, which that could change, hmm. you know. So yeah. All right. So uh, the big thing that happened since last podcast was uh, the Brooklyn Nets uh, decided to give away the entire future of the franchise. The to entire win this team year. to win now. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So I wrote it down. I'm not going to talk about draft pick because who cares? It's unbelievable. Uh, hey, card wise, it doesn't mean anything until they're back. Until they're back, yeah. Um, so we always got an eye on the cards when we talk about stuff. They so, they, they mortgaged the farm. They oh, gave yeah, it all out. It, yeah. it, what was it? Eight. So it was four draft picks and four swaps. And it was a four team trade. Yeah. So we got Nets getting James Harden. Yep. Obviously, Rockets get Chris LeVert, who you like Karis a lot. Levert, yeah. I can't even say his name. Karis. Rodian Karak. Karik? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, crew. Yeah. And nobody cares. Dante, <laughs> Dante Exum, who, by the way, was a big deal in cards for three weeks. Yeah. yeah you know, 20, and no, probably, yeah. probably like a half a season. Yeah. I mean, people, Exum, yeah. it was right after. When, um, he was, when he was in Cleveland. When he was LeBron. in Utah. Oh, Utah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he got drafted by Utah, and he, he started out really well, and yep. I remember his cards were thrown real well. Yeah. Uh, Cavaliers get my guy, Jared Allen. Uh, Tareen Prince. Tareen Prince. And. Torian. 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 Wow, I was way off. Torian. Um, so, interestingly enough, so I, I read an article today that, uh, so Torian, uh, coming to the uh, Cavaliers, they tell uh, Kevin Porter Jr. that he has to clean out his locker and go to, like, the auxiliary locker room. And uh, he decides to start throwing food everywhere in the locker room. Oh, my. And so uh, the Cavaliers are looking to release or trade uh, – Kevin Porter Jr., wow. who was a guy people were talking about in cards. Yeah, as a rookie, yeah. I mean, yeah, he was a rookie last yep, year, yep. first guys were 15th him. pick maybe. Yep. You know, he so, could get picked up somewhere. Before yeah, he'll get picked yeah. up by somebody. But he had, well, and, d- and let me say this. Interesting how I, I see God at work in the Karis Levert trade. Did you yeah. hear what happened with him? No. He took a physical because okay. he got traded, and they found a mass on his no. kidney. That, like, if he doesn't get traded, there's no way he gets – Tested yeah, and it finds it. So he's five? out. He's out indefinitely right now. They, they don't know if it's cancers yet. So what a like. Well, but what that's, a weird. It's like, great that they found it. It's then. amazing. It's that's a awesome. it's a huge blessing for him personally. Yeah. Even though like it feels like oh I got traded. This sucks. Well, here's the thing. Even if he had cancer, I mean, getting cancer at 25, at yeah. your best possible health yeah. to recover from. Well, it, and also finding great. it earlier and finding it so early. Yeah. Finding it earlier. I mean, so. rather than 29, and then it's been growing. Yep, yep. So he's at he's with the Pacers. So when I think about this trade, John, I want to get your thoughts. To be honest, if I think about the Nets, 
the exact thing they I don't think they needed was another guy who's super ball heavy. Yep. Needs a bunch of shots and doesn't offer you anything outside of that. No, like, no. My my favorite pastime is once a month I go on YouTube. Yep. And I watch James Harden play defense compilation. Yeah, it's just hilarious. It's just the funniest thing. He stands there and it looks like a butterfly came on the court and he's yep. like watching the butterfly, and then the defender just like. You know what's interesting hilarious. is we tried a guy bring in a James Harden rookie, Topps Gold the other day. Okay. I bought a gold. That's that ugly Harden. set. Yep. That ugly. And I bought the Curry base. Okay. Believe it or not, the gold Harden sells for like a third of the Curry base. Wow. Which tells you how much he's not liked. In oh, the no, yeah. He's not. Literally, it should be the other way around. Like, the gold should outsell Curry if they're oh, yeah. equal by three times, and it's three times less, which... Well, no, I mean, like, it should outsell Curry. I don't know about three times, because Curry should sell for more yeah, than Harden, Cur- Yeah, but, no, but, but I mean, Harden's been an multiple-time MVP. Now he hasn't yeah. won a title, but, like, think about... Have you ever... Can you think of anyone in the hobby, in any sport, who is less liked than James Harden? I'd have to go back, but like Alex Rodriguez, and, okay, you know, um, Jose Canseco. The only guys I can, well, Bonds, Bonds bon, got a little oh, bit of that. Bonds, yeah, Bonds got Bonds. a little bit of that. But James Harden, he reminds me a little bit of like Russell Westbrook. I I've never come across someone yet in the hobby who collects James Harden. Who that they're super P, collector, they're PC, James they're Harden. like hey, like. Like no one wants like, like it would be a budget thing. Whereas like <laughs> whereas there. like Curry, I feel like is like this fan favorite underdog yeah. story. Like he he's literally the polar opposite as far right. as like fans interest in a player. Well, right? I mean, I know it just it's kinda like Carl Anthony Towns is one of the reasons why I think people haven't like latched on to him is like he just it just doesn't seem like he cares. Yeah, you don't see that fire. Fire. You don't see yeah. that yeah, I mean there's there's a lot that makes fans uh, interested in players, yeah. and I think obviously their background, the story, like us for us, yeah. Adam Thielen, yeah, oh yeah, growing up in Minnesota, being undrafted, all of that, Mankato. Bi- all of that builds like people's connection to a player, and like James Harden feels like he's just really entitled. He's just yep. a whiner. He doesn't give you any effort, and and then he wants out of the rocket. Like he can't. W- ever here's right. the weird part. Like Durant. And Westbrook left him in a way. Yeah. And then now he wants to come back. Durant had to have a conversation with him and go, you know you're Robin here, not Batman, right? Right, like, right. Harden loves being the guy. He can't be the guy. He's playing no. with the best player in the world. Right. So I don't know how he's going to gel and let – like Durant must have been like, just so you know, James. No, I didn't realize. Daddy's getting the shot at the end of the game. You say that. I did not realize that they all played together, they played together before. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't come to that conclusion until they, you just said they that. They went Holy to God. a finals and lost to LeBron. Yeah. In 2012. And then Harden left. So this isn't even like a super a built super team. It's like a it's a, it's a reunion. reunion. It's a reunion. Well, of two. Wow, of them, I obviously not. I didn't Westbrook. put that together of Kyrie being on the Thunder. I no, 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 Kyrie wasn't. It was Westbrook. Oh, it was Westbrook. Westbrook, Harden, and Durant. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. not the. It's not the full. It's not, okay. All right. But, By the way, yeah. two, what, what did I say? Like two, three podcasts ago. Yeah. I always get those two mixed those up. Those two mixed up. I and to be honest, get and you know around. what's funny? Westbrook would probably be, in my opinion, number two as far as least liked stars in the NBA yeah. because they literally just demand the ball and they're like. You you know, it is amazing how I cannot tell those two apart. Westbrook and, and, and Irving. Yeah. Like, I, it's the I'm like, oh, they're all back together. You're like, no, no Westbrook, no, you're no, weird. It's actually a different guy. <laughs> it's, you know, I only have a card shop and I only made the first error four years ago. You think I'd. Learn something between then and there. I, the, every once in a while, I just get I get that mixed up. All right, couple of I, okay. So, <laughs> so one quick news thing. Yeah. Uh, I think we all know if we're in the card. The uh, 1952 Mickey Mantle PSA nine, five point two million dollars. It uh, what we what are we watching? Wow. We're watching the Milwaukee's over down two. Did you just lose? What just happened? They called timeout. Yeah. Are you Durant still just turned it over? Are you still under? No, I'm over, but I got the but Brooklyn's got the money oh, okay. so far, so we need yeah. Anyway. So uh, yep. five point two million dollars, PSA Huge nine, show. Mickey Mantle. Yep. Um, Let's talk. That's a more about than this. the trout. Yep. So, but the thing is, the pop on that six. So you know what's really it's a bunch of nines. You know what's, what's really interesting about this card is so we've talked about this in the past. Evan Mathis sold this card. Yeah. Uh, two years. Less than two years Did ago? Did he trim or? the card is what we got to. I think it's the exact same card, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. It's one uh, of the and it sold. So he bought it for 400000 
three years ago. Three, three years four, ago? Three I didn't years know that. Ago, which, to be honest, not many people have $400,000 to put in a card. So no, like, but. It's not like he was, like, competing against all these people who want But it has a PSA 9, making, it is a PSA 9, making 1952 Mantle. So that card sold. So he bought it for four, sold it for 2.3. You know what he told us? We were talking to him at the yeah. National about this, and he said, he's like, yeah. I'm like, why did you decide to sell it? And he's like, yeah, my wife wanted a new house. So yeah. that, that was that's just the way that works. So We don't live in those worlds. Hey, I can buy you a new house. I'll sell a card. So he sells the card. Now that card comes back up for sale and sells for almost double. more than double in less yeah. time than he Had held it. it. Um, so it is a record. And this guy who bought it, um, let me get his name right, uh, Rob Go. Have you heard of him? He's an entrepreneur no. and actor. He, started, he, he owns a clothing uh, line called Dope Clothing. Okay. No. And then he sells CBD, like you know, stuff. So like everybody else does. So he's yeah. literally got a. He's. I don't know if you saw the picture. It's got. He's got like his clothing on with the card. Which, to be honest, that right there. Says oh, I might a have lot. seen his clothing line before. That you know what that says to me? This guy's an entrepreneur and an actor. Yeah. He's. He sees value in investing five million, million dollars into a baseball card. What. Now what that, that might be that might be the most famous card included in the Jordan rookie by far. I would argue it is the, the mantle is game. the best baseball card. Like the Holdenith Wagner is the card that you can never have. Yep. So that doesn't really count. But like there in the early '80s, there were mantles all over the place. Yep. Like people were finding make garage sales. Yep. You know that was a thing. You couldn't find Holdenith Wagner at garage sale. And you know what's Not funny is, is Go. I think is how you say his name. He said. He dreamt of owning this card when he was a kid. So yeah. he collected it as a kid. That's cool. Who knows? We don't know exactly how long he's been back into the house. Like he's about like, 30 something. Yeah, he's like our age. Yeah. Right? Mid 30s. So, I mean, that's. Well, your age. I'm I'm in the 40 land. Are now. you in the 40? You I'm crossed... 42. Whoa, John. I'm Whoa. old, dude. When did you cross the, over the hill, man? Yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> a couple of years ago, huh? Yeah, so uh, lots of big record breaking sales in the uh, which last t- six which, months. Which tells me. I I think uh, so. How far are we from 1952? We're uh, 50, 48 plus 20. Uh, so 60, 68. 68 years. So 68 years from 1986 hmm. is what? 59. That's uh, been uh, 2021. 68. So 2054. 2054. Yeah. Um, so 33 years from now, be we'll be long. the same distance. No, we'll be the same distance from Mantle as as Jordan is now. Oh yeah, so I'm making a I comparison. Get what you're so I oh, think I, get what you're I think the Jordan in 30 years has the potential to be the, mant- the value uh, of the Mantle. Now, does that make sense? Yeah. And what what do ten go for? So right now a ten is 200. Now there's way more, so it's a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah pool. fair like enough. And, and it wasn't people were collecting cards in 1986. Yes, I mean that ton, was a thing. Yes. And I, there's we collected cards. I mean, I don't know. We could actually pull it up and check, but I, as far as how many are graded, there might be ten times the Jordan. Rookies might be a million dollar time. card though. It might be a million dollar card. Yeah, and I mean, that, that that would be yeah. it going up four times. And what I'm and, saying now is like, so we went from baseball being the iconic card. Yeah. To now, I feel like we're in a pretty heavy basketball yeah. shift. And so now, what becomes that? I think it's the Jordan. Right? No, yeah, yeah, right. That's, that's an interesting way of looking at it. So, if you buy, you know, you buy a Jordan Nine right now for thirty thousand, does it have the potential to literally be? Yeah, the, a million. Right. And a, and a ten is actually worth like four. Right. You know. All right. So, <laughs> so uh, Steve was over here today. What, what up, up, Steve? Steve? <laughs> uh, so he goes. Uh, he showed me this auction mm-hmm. for a Patrick Mahomes flawless. Autograph rookie to fifteen. Yeah, it went for like a hundred and some. No, no, no. Uh, uh, RPA. Yep. To fifteen, it was at twenty six hundred dollars. And I was like, "What the hell is wrong with the corner on that thing? The corners all beat up. All the corners they beat up." Yeah. Uh, he goes, "Yeah." So there was a, a threat and blowout. So I want to. So um, the cards just beat beat up. Yeah. And on blowout, they have a Patrick Mahomes thread in football. Yep. And someone said, we got to get the story about this card, right? Yeah. And the person who was selling the card was a member of blowout. Okay. So I want to read, read you this post. This is, his name is Cardboard5. That's okay. his name on blowout. Yep. All right. So I'm going to read the, the post verbatim. Yep. The card has been in my collection since early 2018. My son and I collect Mahomes together. 
No, it wasn't graded. Just in the sealed flawless case. So they were uncirculated yeah, yeah, cards. They came, yeah, they came. I'm a single father with custody of three kids. He was showing his friend the collection, of course, without me knowing. My daughter was doing laundry and washed a jacket. When I got home from work that evening, I put the laundry up and found the card had been washed. I immediately took it out of the case to dry it. I called Panini and told him what happened and asked if they had a replacement that I could even purchase as I knew it wasn't their fault or was ours. They said they had no replacement. The card was worth about 10 k at the time, which of course still hurt. LMAO, I showed him sold listings of what it's worth now. He feels horrible about it, and I tell him it's no big deal. He's just going to community college instead of Harvard. I really sh should just keep the card as a family memento of what could have been. I've got a pretty massive Mahomes collection, so it's not the only big card we have, but definitely was the best Mahomes card we ever owned. Wow. Now, that card, I mean, what's up? Yeah, so I, I was yeah, looking I was that play. up, I I and then I never wrote it down because I'm, because I'm completely unprepared for our unscripted podcast between two LCS owners. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's 50, 50, 60,000, something like that. Flawless. Highest, Flawless, highest number to 15. Flawless. It's like a ruby. Steve had thought it was so called it's, ruby. So it's an autograph with a with a. a yeah, it's like stone. a red border, like a ruby or red border. Okay, I looked it up and they they don't say what parallel it was, so it's a parallel version of it. Yep. But yeah, so um, but we have talked about this many times in the past, where we talk about sports cards as an investment, yep. and one of the things on especially key cards like this is people don't think about floods, earthquakes, typhoons. A bear attack, you know, like you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the last one, but but like cards get destroyed over time, right? And then insurance pays out and everything, but that card's gone, so and I, now supply it, it can never be more; it can only ever be less. Yep. So I have a I have a comp on this card, um, a nine five on that a flawless auto to fifteen, so for twenty nine thousand uh, on July twenty sixth. Yeah. So it's probably actually up a little bit from then. Washing machine. Washing machine. Yep. And so, no, I got to to your point. Not only is the supply capped, yeah, it's like you said, decreasing. Mm -hmm. For two, and, and the other reason it's de well, part of it is it's the other reason it's capped in a lot of ways is there's probably some flawless cases that are not even open. Yeah, yet. that's true. So the one, so of the fifteen that have been created, you have one that went through a washing machine. You have some that probably haven't even been opened yet. Yeah. So there may only be half of those. And then there's then then there's a, a a decent amount of everything, even though it's flawless. Like nobody like accidentally opens flawless at Walmart. Right. That doesn't happen, no, right? right? So you go spend two grand on a but box, you take care people of it. do get out of the hobby, sure. and they just put the cards in the attic. Yeah. And so it's not that there's less of them, but they're all being held. Yep. They just hold never on be them. seen on the market, at least not for decades. Right. Because you know if you bought it when you're 25 mm -hmm. and you die when you're 85. Right. It's going to sit in your attic for 60 years. Maybe they never got back in the cards. Right. And they just was like, oh, yeah, and they're not paying attention to market. They have no idea. Maybe they don't even remember pulling it. Because Mahomes was, you know, the big deal. Wasn't that big of a deal. Right. You know, he's a first-round quarterback, but maybe he didn't remember that he pulled it. So that's uh, – I, I saw that, and I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna copy and paste this verbatim to read his post. Because right. I didn't want to – I don't want to paraphrase. But, yeah, uh, washing machine because he showed his friend – the Whoops. best card that they had, probably. Because oh why would he show the second best card that they had? Oh, my goodness. But it seems like they are Mahomes collectors, so um, from a so money standpoint. Did, it, did that auction finish? Or is it no, so okay. it's the first day. Oh, there's okay. still six days left. Yep. Um, so I don't know if this podcast will be live to help him get a few more bids, Evan, if uh, <laughs> if it'll be posted before that auction ends. So maybe we'll help Cardboard 5 get a few more bucks. Hey, so let me, let me jump back for one second to the Jordan. I pulled up the pop report. Right. So the mantle, there's 1,404 graded by PSA. So okay. 1,404. And then how many make it? And, no, no, that's that's mantle. Oh, that's mantle. 1,400 yeah. mantles. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, and Jordan, <laughs> and Jordan, there's 18,320. So 13 times. So about, yeah, 13 times. So let me ask you this. Do you see a – Could a 10 be a couple million dollars? Yeah, so so let me say this. Jordan, there's three hundred and seventeen tens. Mm-hmm. And mantle and how many nines? And mantle, there's six nines. So now here's the thing. Like 
a Mantle 9 and a Jordan 10 is probably equivalent in terms of the best. I mean, obviously, there's no 10 Mantles, right? Yep. So, no, no, there are. There's three. There's, there's three, three 10 three. Mantles? Yeah, which literally... Oh, like, hold fine. On. So, literally, those Mantles are probably $25 million cards each? I mean, I wouldn't One even know how to analyze that. No, it could that. be 50. Could yeah, be 50 I mean, how do you analyze what a 10 would be? Well, what, do you, what do you think, Evan? If you were to take a stab. 5.2 is a 9. 5.2 is a 9. So, you go 5 times, 10 30 times? 30. Yeah, 30 yeah. Yeah, Six I mean, if there's times. only three of them in a stack card, I, I don't think you're wrong where you could say 50, and I, who, who's to say? Literally, if that card came to auction, it would so above and beyond blow away any sold. It, I wonder if we know who owns all three of them. Uh, I mean, PSA not, might know. No, P, well, it's not public. Well, it might have moved. Yeah. It might have yeah, moved, too, moved, so it's probably a lot of private sales. But, but let me say this, too. Wow. As you got, and as, let's talk pop report for a second. So as we're talking Well, I'll put it this way. Let me, let me yep. go back. Yep. That... Mantle 10 is such a massive multiple over Jordan 10. Yes. Just because of lack of supply. Yeah. I mean, Th- three versus 300. Yeah. There's literally and a there's hundred more times 10, more. There's more Jordan 10 Jordans out there, too. Yep. You know, but there but might now, not be more but now Mantle. Now, let me say this. Supply alone does not determine value, obviously. No. So, but we're talking about two of the biggest. Yeah, we're talking about two of the biggest. Cards. This is the iconic card. Now, now, let me say this about pop reports. Just because PSA says there's been 18,000 yes. Jordans graded. I personally graded a card a yes. Jordan with PSA, cracked it out, and regraded it with Beckett. So sometimes these cards have been graded two, mm-hmm. three times each. That and that. So I would say these numbers are about seventy-five percent of what's actually in slash. You think? You think that? Yeah. 25%. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know how to start calculating that, but sure. Well, because you've had some destroyed, small yeah. percent made five percent, then you've had another twenty percent, and you've had literally. I know guys who have graded one Jordan. Three or four times with PSA. And Same card. Kept trying, kept, kept trying, trying, kept to trying. Get the, and then they finally got their half That makes or, sense because it's not yeah. just one regrade, but maybe multiple, multiple attempts regrade. to regrade. If you have a really, really clean card, you're going to – Yeah, you know. you're gonna see a, we're going to see a, 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 a RPA to 99 be, uh, where the pop report is 105. Yeah. It's and like, wait, what happened? <laughs> I mean, literally, I had a customer the other day uh, who graded a Zion Silver Prism with PSA, got a 9. He felt like it was undergraded. He cracked it out, oh. resubbed it, and got a 10. No, we. So, I, mean, I just thought of something. Yeah. What about all the 9s that got cracked and sent to Beckett? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, that's less. So, so, you, so your 75% might be right. Yeah, so 18,000. Or 25% less. Now, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a stab. It's a rough, like, yeah, Gas so, without so, any real. She so might have closer to like ten thousand to fifteen thousand actually still wow. rated in PSA slabs. Very interesting. What do you got for us? Clint? Uh, card shows. I was actually fortunate oh, yeah. enough this weekend. I was talking to one of our customers, and I didn't realize Minnesota. Uh, there was a card show this weekend in Minnesota. Saint, I was unaware. Saint Francis at the uh, Legion. Um, so Saint Francis is actually on the way to Cambridge, and I was going yeah, so up, like north. East of the metro area? Yeah, so it's right up Highway 47, north of Anoka. Um, you know, oh, kinda, uh, uh, su- central. Central. Su- yeah, yeah, south south of Cambridge. Um, uh, where, where is it off It's of? at the American. Off of 47? L- yeah, it's right off 47. Oh, really? Oh, I thought it was more east than that. Okay. No, no it's right off 47. So um, there's about eight dealers there. Of the dealers, um, and let's talk card shows for a minute. Of the dealers, I only recognize one or two of them from the Bloomington show, which is oh, wow. every uh, month. Um, the Bloomington show in Minnesota. Well, that would make sense because Bloomington's literally on the other side of the metro area. So if yeah. you're in northern part of Minnesota, I mean, that's a heck of a trek. Yeah, so every month, the Twin City Sports Collectors Club. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you listening, if you're in Minnesota, you're looking for uh, where they post shows. I've had a lot of people ask us mm-hmm. this. Great question. TCSCC.org. Twins City Sports Collectors Club.org. Right. Post all the upcoming shows. Can I can I give yeah. you an easier way to find it? Yeah. Go to Google and type in Minnesota card shows. Yeah. And the the link will be I like top it, two. Yeah, it's top few. Yeah. Um. So I just got an email. Uh. The that show is coming back February sixth. So the day before the Super Bowl. Ooh, I should maybe get table. Um. It's going to be the first. Uh, well, I don't know if there's going to be an available because they're right now limiting all the oh, dealers that are part of that. There's eight because there have to be eight. No, no, I'm not talking about St. Francis. I'm talking about oh, Bloomington. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I wouldn't do Bloomington. Yeah. So Bloomington on February 6th is coming back. Okay, for cool. Show, which is exciting for me. Like, I think right now there's such a buzz around cards. Like, shows are a great opportunity to buy cards raw. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I was able to buy some graded cards at a huge discount. I think a lot of the guys that were doing this show probably 
are they don't have a they don't do eBay and they don't have a means of selling. So they and literally this might be the one time a year where they actually decide to sell some cards. Right. Know? So I was happy to go. I spent a bunch of money and I got some really good stuff. Well, let's, there about let's, okay. So we didn't talk about this, but and this might be a horrible part of the podcast where we can't think of anything and it was a bad idea. But can, <laughs> let's 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 think of some like different types of dealers they are. So yep. the one that comes to mind is the old guy that always uses book price. Yes. You can get massive cards off this guy yep. because if the market moves really fast, he's, that book is so far behind. Is yep. a month old at least, but he might be using a book he from two months an, ago. He might be using a six month old book. But then you can yep. be like, oh, it's six dollars, and it's, it's like a hundred easy. It's like a hundred easy. Yeah. yeah. This was happening with Steph Curry when his rookie exploded. I literally remember guys they had him ten dollars on him and they were selling for five hundred yep. at the time because they hadn't checked eBay. And, you know. So what are, what other kind okay, of dealer here, that? Here, here's a, a dealer that I did a big. All right, maybe those be a fun. This, this is a fun. dealer who reminds me of it's his booth was a combination of a uh, garage sale meets an estate sale meets a flea market. Like, okay, everything was. Would like, you say this guy does it once? This is the one time he's ever done it, he, or he's always doing it as a style. I actually have met this guy before at okay. a flea market. Okay, and an auction. He's big into buying in quantity and selling in quantity. Yeah. He literally, he said to me, he's like, he had a, a tote full of cards. Yeah. And a few boxes. He's like, I want to move them all in one lot cheap. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm your guy. Like, let's right, go. Right, you right. know what I mean? Now, I ended up, he, he gave me his lot price for like 100 bucks for all this stuff. And I really wanted about 10% of it. Correct. And I actually bought. The ten percent of it for like fifty, and let I didn't want to deal. Oh, with you're I'm like, at the I'll just take this a little bit for half. I mean, literally, I'm at the place where I'm like, I don't know if I want to deal with all that junk. And like some people are like, hey, let's take on the inventory. I'm right. like, ah, I'd rather literally just take the. Cream now, if you had cave it at the time, or you just <laughs> drop or off the toilet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just like one of those things. So that's like one guy, right? The the wholesaler yep. guy. There's always like the the autograph guy. Yep. He's just all he does is autograph. There's only ever one at a show. Yeah, because you can't. Really there's not enough customers for two. Right. <laughs> um, well, here's the other guy. The yeah. high, the high end all graded guy. Yeah. He was there. He literally had not a single non graded card on his table. Right. And and nothing like under three hundred dollars. It was or all whatever. expensive and it was yeah. Uh, and he's always trading, right? Yeah. And and here actually this is one of the things I, I'm not this guy, but there's a bunch of these guys. They literally go to shows with graded cards yeah. to trade yes. for ungraded cards to grade them. And that's their margin in the business, right? So they bought a raw card, they got a ten. Yeah. Now they're trading that ten for more raw for cards. five more raw cards that they might ten three of them, and so literally it's like. Oh, I got one! I got one! Um, the guy who makes zero sales because he doesn't really want to sell anything. You go, how much is that? And he's like three hundred, and you're like, well, last sale was one hundred and fifty. Yeah, but you know, how much is that? I I don't even know why I put that out on the table. That's not for sale. How many times have you heard that? I don't even know why I put that out on the table. It's the I don't want to sell it guy. Yeah, and, right? and basically the, he's like, the, I'll sell it if you give me three times. Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, the the I don't the, the prices <laughs> dictate and determine he's not going to sell anything. Right. Um, the, here's the kind of a sad one is the the dealer who has the same exact stuff every show. Yeah. And so maybe he might sell just a little bit, but he never buys any new inventory. Well, because he, he needs new customers who haven't seen it because everybody yeah. else has picked through it. Well, right? he has to sell it to buy something, but since he never sells anything, he never he can never buy anything. Right. And that one's kind of – and they're usually some of the nicest guys of those guys, so I always oh, feel sure. kind of bad. Like, they're usually just, like, real friendly. And well, and then, and then there's the guy who um, I call him the the break and dump guys. Yeah. So this guy had been in, like, every Viking break of every product for the last <laughs> two years. And so he had all the new Viking stuff and all the stuff he didn't want to keep, like his non-big hits. Right. He was just dumping them. So I bought Justin Jefferson from him. I bought literally oh, sure. every colored mosaic. Every prism and every relic that was right. reasonably priced, and I just got them all in one big lot because we can move Jefferson as fast as I can Absolutely. get him. And so he and he's happy because he's recouping some of his break costs, and he's got his autos and his, his five yeah. cards he's keeping. Yeah, the, the rest of his monster is Jefferson like, 101. Let's move the bulk. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll give you one that I was. Okay. Um, so I, I tell uh, customers this all the time. I said, uh, until I open this store, I've never been a dealer before. Sure. Um, and they go, oh, you've never done a show? No, I've, I've done – I've had – Tables maybe a dozen times, mm -hmm. but the the collector dealer, the one that collects, he's got a big thing. He's at the show once in a while to move some of his cards. Right. So I I I was literally that guy. I've even done Twins Fest twice oh, wow. at the collector. I was just like, I had cards. I'll do Twins Fest. And so were you? Let me ask you: Were you pricing in the I don't want to sell it, 
or were you? Really yeah, kind of. Okay. Kind of. Well, I, I mean, I was pricing top end because I, one of the reasons why I thought I was never going to get a card shop is I knew I was a horrible card salesman because I never wanted to sell anything. And it wasn't until I sold my whole collection to fund the apparel business where I realized I didn't die from selling the collection. And then I was like, and then with the apparel, I have no emotional attachment to it. Yeah. So there was stuff like really epic stuff that I had maybe two hundred dollars on, maybe had it for a while, and somebody offered me one forty. I'm like, yeah, okay, yep. I'll take the money. Yep. I've been able to do that with cards now. Now I'm just happy owning it for a short period of time. Right. And that's making me a good card card salesman, not car salesman. I had a conversation with a, a local card shop owner who went out of business some years ago, and he, I asked him this question about collecting. Yeah. And he said, once he stepped to the other side of the counter. Behind the counter, yeah, he's like. He, one of his phrases was, "You can't get high on your own supply," right. which we've talked about that, that ripping wax. Right. But the other thing is, he's like, "I don't get attached to any cards because mm-hmm. he's he had to like discipline himself in that." No. Now you're still a, like, I'm still a collector. I'm like, putting together a few but, sets, but none of sure. them are. And there's certain cards that I really like as an investment right. that I want. That, that one of the benefits of being a dealer is you can fund your own investments at a cheaper cost. Oh, absolutely. You know. You know, you might buy a collection for $1,000, maybe you can make $1,000 off of it, but there's a $300 card you want to keep. Well, yes. have I, re- I haven't really paid anything for that card right. once I sell everything. My cost basis on the card is, is zero, zero, and it's got upside, so right. it's, a, it's a, you know. Right, and that, that's definitely a benefit. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you really – I. If it wasn't for the apparel business, I would not have the card shop because yeah. I would ju- I'd be too afraid that – I wouldn't be able to sell anything and I'd go out of business. Right. But once I was able to sell really nice finds that I'm never going to find again, yep. one-on-one, so to speak, yep. eBay one-on-one, eBay so to one. speak. Which I, by the way, I, I want to punch everybody who puts that in their listing. Classic. But <laughs> Classic. John wants to punch people. John's but, yeah, it, but you know, it was minds. like I didn't have an emotional attachment to it. It wasn't my size. Right. That was part of the reason why uh, apparel is nice is because unless it's your size, you don't get it. But I had stuff that was my size. I'm like, oh, I might keep this if it – and, and then I get an offer and I sell it. John, let me throw this out there back to the card shows for a second. All right. Um, are we going to Iowa? No, we're not going to Iowa. A week from this weekend. Yeah. Uh, there's another show in Eau Claire, which I've Yeah, I heard about that one. Oak, it's at the Oakwood Mall, and it's running Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, there's a lot looser yeah, regulation Wisconsin in Wisconsin, little, so Wisconsin's yeah. more open. Like the bars are open in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, they're full, full go. Um, that'll be an interesting show. And to the one of the reasons I like going to these other shows, like to your mm-hmm. exact point, is I've seen most of the cards yeah. of most of the dealers in Bloomington every month. Right. But some of these guys had never. Looked Might at be a good show. buying opportunity to go there. What is yeah. it? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What time does it open on Friday? I think it opens uh, 10 a.m. It says. Yep. So 10 a.m. <sighs> Uh, to 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and then 11 to 4 on Sunday. So it's an earlier shutdown. If you if you plan on going, let me know. I might uh, want to jump in with you, see if th- I can get someone to cover your shop yeah, for that I mean, day, because that would be a good buying opportunity. Yeah, out shows, of market. And and actually, f- to 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 the point, actually, right before we got on, yeah, the making here, plans on the podcast. I, w- I was literally, uh, I just fielded a phone call from a guy that I gave a business card to at the show, yeah. who has a bunch of retail wax he wants to sell. So a bunch of prism. Oh yeah, yeah, you. Were so like, that call before. I, that's the other thing too is you're making connections of future purchases Absolutely. and like you know, just getting. No, yeah. If you go to that show, I mean, I probably wouldn't want to go by myself. Just you know, driving. Oh, Claire is not that far away. It's two, a couple two, hours, two hours, whatever. We could, but we could leave at like seven thirty. And yeah, I'd love to go buy some stuff. Yeah, if you're gonna go, let me know. That's well. Good. We'll do that. Not that any so, of the listeners so, care about so, whether we go to Eau Claire. Or but not, I just but. Want to let, <laughs> I want to let those those of you guys that are listening know that uh, so. In February 6th, there'll be that show in Bloomington. Yeah. And so it's at the Valley West Mall off Old Chocopee in France. That's every What, what day the is first, the Eau Claire show again? Uh, that's the 29th through the 31st. 29th. Oh, yeah. okay. That's, so that's back-to-back back weekends. So you have this, the, the sh- Eau Claire show, and then the next weekend will be Bloomington. And then hopefully Bloomington will be back to monthly. So. All right. Do you have any other dealer? That was kind of fun. Any other dealer you can think of? That's a great I'm trying question. Trying to think. Like, really well, there's the guys like Jeremy, who's the grading card guy. Yeah. Who literally has empty cases. He's just collecting cards for grading. He's like, and like uh, what are you trying to sell here? He's, like, <laughs> uh, he's, like, he's just there for buying. You know, like, Oh, like, how about the Mr. Mints? The guy who literally just puts oh, hundreds. The commercial like, buyer. No, the guy who literally just puts stacks of cash out and just says buying. Yeah. That's all he's doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that that was a that was actually more popular in the '90s, yeah. where there would be institutional buyers or commercial buyers. I yep. would. Yep. Call I just came up with that, but 
Yeah. That's not a, that's not a hobby term. That's no, just right. something I came up with. Um, but like they they're they're sitting on half a million dollars, million dollars, two yep. million dollars, and yep. and that's their fund, so they can constantly buy. Usually, a high end cards they're looking yep. for. Yep. Um, not looking to for your dollar bin. Yeah. No, I'm trying to think. Well, then there's that. Who, the, who who's your favorite uh, national de- dealer at the national? Oh, my favorite dealer at the national, the Dime Box. The Dime Box. They're the they're the Literally. older couple. They got a quad. That's uh, so just four booths put how many, together. How many boxes do you think they have? We did the math on it because a couple million. If, I don't know if we told the story in the podcast, but we go to the first national in seventeen. Yeah, I, I go with you guys. Thank you again. That was awesome. Um, and I'm at the dime box. Like, I didn't get as much time off as I thought I would because Mike had to leave early, so I had to be at the booth more. Right. But I got plenty of time to, and I didn't have much money, so it didn't really matter. Right. But I'm at the dime. But you don't have. You don't need a lot of money to be at the dime uh, dime booth. Mm-hmm. And so. I got back to the ho- we got back to the hotel. I think the first night, and I said, "How the hell are they making any money?" And it's a quantity. Point. And I'm just going like it's a dime. And so they have a quad. Yep. What's the quad price? Because it's a little cheaper than four booth. Uh, five thousand? No, four thousand. No, yeah, it's just forty five hundred. Forty five hundred. Eleven hundred. Where is it? So like I'm 12. going forty five hundred plus hotel plus travel. There's seven thousand. You know, 6, 000. seven thousand. There's no way they're making money. And then, and then somehow you might have prompted it or whatever. It's like, well, how many? Kind of what you asked. Like, how many buys? And I started doing the math. And if you think about it, like on one table, they they would stack the boxes like yep. three high. Yep. And maybe they're five. Ten, so they're both sides of the table. They face out. Yeah. So there's five, five, and then maybe two boxes high. That's twenty monster boxes per table. I'm trying to envision in my head one, two, three, four, five, maybe ten tables. Okay. Two hundred monster boxes. Plus they probably have more as they're selling out because it never looks like they're empty. Right. So so two so hundred. You said two. So let's say boxes? there's three thousand cards per monster box. Yep. Say they're bigger cards than there. Yep. A three hundred a box times two hundred. That's six hundred thousand. <laughs> you know, and so obviously they're not selling through. Yep. But it's like. But, but I would We also started guess, doing the math, and I was yeah. like, "Oh crap! They're making more money hey, than hey, everybody but, at the show." Don't you think? No, they're not making more. No, money. but you got to understand Blow what I'm saying. I'm, wax is making the most. Of no, it right? Better. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm um, being uh, uh, facetious. Facetious. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And we also don't know what their deal is with some of these other wholesalers, where they might literally liquidate whatever's left. That at the might end be for true, and the reason why that might be true card. is because every year you go there, it's always the previous year's stuff. Yeah. And now, now I shouldn't say that. That's a, that's a different dime box guy. He always has. He's. A, I think he's a big breaker. Yeah, he's got all. This so stuff. he's yep. breaking, and then he's selling his bulk. But yeah, I mean, selling dime and quarter cards is, is because you can sell so much and you can stack them so high. Yep. But there'll be thirty people at their quad. Yeah, it's unreal. At one time. Yeah, that's Just definitely digging. that's definitely one of the primary dealer categories. Absolutely. Is the bulk seller. No, those are the guys you don't normally see at your local card show. Right. Um, if you do see him, you know he's got a table and half of the table of dime cards. Yep. You know, but this is this is a, a quantity of scale for sure. No, I mean I think there's a lot to be said about each of those price points offerings. Mm-hmm. I mean, now let me say this: I'll give you a little insight into the show that I went to, what I'm buying. Yeah. Let's talk about what like here's where I'm at personally. Actually, it's funny. I got a, a text from a buddy as soon as my home's been down. He goes. Hey, Mahomes got hurt. You should sell me all of his yeah, rookies yeah, cheap yeah. quick. <laughs> we see we see that a lot in Facebook groups. To, to be honest, if the Chiefs lose, I'm gonna take the opportunity to buy as much Mahomes as I can because hmm? I think you might just see even a small dip, like even, yeah, or, even or you just, just or, or you just don't see an increase, a kickback, yeah. for just a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you want to be buying him. Well, there's two things that happen in the Facebook groups. And I, I think Evan, Evan's pretty active in Facebook groups. You'll probably recognize this. So if somebody gets hurt or they're not doing so well, yep. there are some people, which I think is the minority, that'll be like, I'm hey, buying. I'm buying Kevin Durant after he got hurt. And they're totally serious, right? Yep. But the most of them, I, I, I'm watching Evan's face, most of them are like, oh, yeah, he's not doing so well. Sell all your cards to me. They're not buying nothing. They're holding yeah. And they're out there trying to pump that guy so that they're, whatever they're holding is not falling. Yeah. That's most of them. 
Most of them are having this massive position, and they're like, I'll buy whatever you have at $20. I'll well, think stuff. about this, though. It's no different than if I'm buying Tesla stock, and I believe in Tesla, and Tesla starts dropping. Yeah. What do I do? I increase my position. Because right. I see the long term. No, right. And that would be like the Durant buyer. Yeah, that would be the Durant. one like, hey, look, he's awesome. He's going to be not only that, I'm gonna, I'll start buying And him. not only that, one of the benefits to that is you're lowering your cost basis over the whole of your position yeah. by entering the market at a lower right. point. I think I saw a lot of the second group of yep. the scared ones yeah, with like Zion. Yeah. Like the Zion collectors were are, are still constantly afraid. I watch Zion. I'm not afraid. They had, hit, no, I mean, what I'm saying is he has one bad sense. game yeah. and they're just. They're making these arguments about, I'll buy every Zion you got. You know, I mean, it's like that's them being very just scared. Quick, no deals real, are getting real done. Real quick Twitch reaction. Yeah, nobody's them. getting any deals from those guys done. They're just, they're just, afraid. I'd be afraid if I was holding Zion. You know, not, not again, not from a playing standpoint, but just I'll from t- I'll tell you some standpoint. of the stuff I picked up. So I bought, I, I found one Mahomes rookie in the whole show and bought it. Oh, wow. What, what was it? Uh, just like a prestige. Oh, okay. Low end, whatever, but I think I can grade it. Very cool. I also bought every slabbed Brady that was like reasonable. Sure, sure. Got a bunch of those, and then I bought. So my you first. you like Brady, if I remember correctly? Brady's okay. he's average. He's all right. I mean, he might be okay. Uh, I mean, we just talked about him being the transport goat. He is literally <laughs> the goat of goats. The across sports goat. Um, oh, hey, did, how'd you do on the game? Did you get your bets uh, on the well, Nets game? Split. I split even. So what you didn't get the under and but you won the I won the money line. Won the money line. better, so I was up a little bit. But. Because uh, 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 Bucks were favored mm-hmm. against the Nets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you told me that, I I heard it wrong. You said it was uh, Nets plus eight, and then to me that sounded like uh, uh, the Nets were favored by eight. And so I'm like, I'm take, I looked I take it, the Bucks on that, and I, I had looked it at backwards. It and I'm like, how are how is a Milwaukee a favorite I didn't, at Brooklyn? Yeah, that why why would they be a favorite? That's strange. They're bad. I don't know. So yeah, I would I would have took I would have took your bet too. Um, what are you buying? What what walked in this week? Any updates on? I had kind of a slow buying week. I'm not I'm not um, the big buying baller like somebody sitting across from me who buys constantly. Um, yeah, I had a good buying week the week before. Bought a couple uh, big lots of, of stuff to list and. Mm-hmm. Oh, right before the podcast, uh, in my so what I do is I have a to be listed box. Mm-hmm. It's like well, not one box, like four shoe box, five shoe boxes, and it's just got them. Everything's in alphabetical order because I do player variation listing. Yep. And then when I get about five cards of one player, then I can revise the listing and add to it mm-hmm. if it's less than a, it's not worth uh, um, labor. And so uh, a friend of our Matt was in the store and he was digging through it. Um, to look for cards to buy from me, and he found a Diggs RPA to 50, so I got to get that thing listed tonight. So did you not even know that was there? Yeah, I vaguely remember it. It's something I bought, a collection I bought, like, for three months, but I never had any extra Diggs to list, so it's just been sitting there. So you, so that box includes jerseys and autos. It's not yeah, yeah, it's just anything that's going on eBay. Okay. And so, if you know, if I don't get any more Diggs, that, that dig might sit there for a year Right. if I don't get any more Diggs. Right. So yeah, so that's a but that's the card though. I'm just gonna list it by itself. You know, yeah. it should sell quickly. Hopefully, I'll probably set aggressively. Nice. Um, so I I've been meaning to bring this up two podcasts in a row. Something Steve uh, said to me. What, what up, up, Steve? Steve? Uh, <laughs> so uh, he had um, told me a little nugget. I like uh, nuggets from Steve. A little, little nugget from Steve. Uh, that would be a new segment. Nuggets from Steve. Nuggets. That's the weekly nugget. <laughs> Um, vending box singles come back, um, men's size a lot. So cards from, so in, back in the day, um, in like Tough Stuff magazine and back up there'd be big ads where you would buy vending boxes because they were uncirculated and you could mm-hmm. get really mint cards or really in the, in the eighties and nineties, you were building player lots. Mm-hmm. So I think we bought this up maybe once before. So the advantage of a vending box for those of you listening and don't even know what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. A vending box is somewhere between a complete set and a wax box, meaning you you can get Remember more than one. Remember how many are in there? Five hundred. Yeah, they're like they're yeah they're a shorter one row box. Yes. They're you the top ones were blue. It would say the year on it, and you would a lot of times get. You know, you weren't guaranteed one of each player, but it's very unlikely you weren't going to have at least right. one of each rookie. The other advantage was and, because and what, they were And packs, what we would do in these vending boxes is they were literally vending boxes. There were vending machines where you put in yep. a couple quarters. 
You pull it in, a couple cards will come so out. So literally, and, they would fill the vending machine with this box. They would right. take it out, and literally, it would be the the supply for probably one low one one box loaded. One ream, yeah. And that was why that yeah, it was one ream. That's why the size of it was to fit right. how many. It wasn't like a. It, was, a it wasn't like an arbitrary there. size. It was right. the size of the mm-hmm. machine. Mm-hmm. And so in the eighties, actually, vending unopened vending boxes would carry deal. a huge premium mm-hmm. for grading. Specifically. So, like, an 85 vending yeah, box. Yeah, so, like, in, in the mid-90s when grade started happening, people were trying to find those vending boxes. Absolutely. I mean, we still get them in once in a while, and we usually – now, a lot of them have been picked through. Yeah. So, you have to look at them because unless they're actually sealed, most of them aren't sealed still. Were they – did they come sealed? I don't know if I've – There was, like, a little piece one. of tape on them normally okay. that what that came from the distributor. And you can tell because it's a specific kind of tape. Yep. Like, they know there's some complete sets like that. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, you can tell what is the factory tape versus For sure. just – some packet tape somebody just have. resealing it yeah. right so yeah vending, but yeah so yeah. they they've been coming back mint size um I, I don't know how often but more often than normal i can't think of a specific card that i sent from a vending box where i've had that experience i'll say a set that i have always had mint sized okay 1996 bowman's best basketball really so, so kobe i've yeah. never gotten them to grade a kobe rookie for me they've all been mint sized so you always have to so send the, those so to Beckett? You have to send them to Beckett. So that set specifically was too small. There was, I don't know if you remember yeah, this, they had, the best, it, they had the best cuts inserts. They had the atomic refractors right. of oh, those. Refractors. All of those are too small. So if you get those, a lot of people will send them to PSA. They'll kick them back mid size and then they'll sell them raw. So you might as well. You, well, you got to go to Beckett. You right. might as well just send yeah. them back right you away. Go to well, yeah, and you Unless can do that. some reason that you want to at least try PSA, but knowing, knowing that it'll probably come back. So Beckett doesn't have the same – standards for but here's the size. thing i don't understand about psa and that so like if you're saying now let's just say for all i know is you have an anecdotal experience that's not correct right mm-hmm. maybe everybody else is getting psa to grade there then uh, but let's there say, are a few graded but not many but let's say but let's say it's completely true right yeah. which i would assume it if probably you asked is. 10 of the you sent that you yeah, sent yeah. enough in where mm-hmm. it probably is. if that's how the size they are why is psa being such Wieners about it because it, when the when the manufacturing varies below what should have been no, but uh, if Bowman they're all standards, that size, they're they're commonly that size, but, and that's it, does, the size. it doesn't matter. They have a size that they have to. Yeah. it has to meet for them. See, that one's weird because if it's like ninety nine percent are the size and one percent are not, fair enough. You know why that's so? That's actually why PSA doesn't grade star. If you've ever seen a star box, yeah, of. Literally, this is the craziest thing. I had a one-row box of the complete 85 star set with the Jordan. And if you looked across the box, it was all every set was different size. Yeah. So it literally is like like visible. Like We're talking like no, a no. 16th of an inch or 32nd of an inch. There's a handful of sets like that where you look at it and you can put your finger across and it's like a topographical map. And so the way it worked is each team – would be one size, and oh, then the funny. next team would be a different size, and the next, te- and, and they didn't have any universal standard. Right. So it's really hard for. Well, the they were just companies. throwing them through the cutters, like. Yeah. No, it, it was low grade, low. Yeah, star, quality. star is not a attractive product by any means. No, so, very basic. Right. Um. So, uh, I looked at NBA players to see if we could have another conversation about like. Yeah. Interesting guys who are doing well. Yep. Well, uh, the cream has rise to the top. There's nobody to talk about. Uh, not not anybody that we either haven't talked about before or who somebody you would assume would be at top. But yeah. so let's talk about top two guys. Yep. Bradley Beal, thirty four point nine points, five point three rebounds, five mm-hmm. assists. He's still the mm-hmm. scoring leader for uh, the year so I far. Saw Curry was number two, right at twenty eight. No, somebody um, passed him. He was PSA nine. So twenty twelve, thirteen prism. Yep. Uh, base, not a silver. Uh, 200, 220 for Beal. Uh, PSA 10 is about 700. There was a couple $700 sales mm-hmm. um, that just went past. And then Kevin Durant, number two. Nice. Um, 30.7 points, 6.9 rebounds, 5.7 assists. So even though he's back by like four points, he's having a better year than Bradley Beal. Yeah. But not by a lot. Well, and he's, but not he's, by a lot. He's on a better team, and he's more valuable to his team. Right. But I mean, he's got him by like almost. Uh, Rebound and a half, and then yep. over a half of an assist. I I think that probably evens up to about four points. I mean, Durant's points. a much better defensive player too than right. Beal, so I'd I'd be curious to know their pl- their plus minus. And so, stats, but. 2007 08 tops Chrome PSA nine 2000 to 2250. This is base, not refractor. Yep. 
and PSA 10 is 7,200 to 7,400. So that's the status of the top two uh, scoring leaders in basketball right now and their cards. Interesting enough, uh, speaking of that, I'm literally looking right now at the price movements by player the last seven yeah, years. Yeah. No, I think we talked – the guy I watched this game when he blew up, mm-hmm. Nikhil Alexander-Walker for the Pelicans, who was yeah, a rookie last yeah, yeah, year, yeah. had like a – what do you have, 42 or something? I didn't even he, notice that. He had like 38 or 42, and he he scored the ball. Lonzo Ball was out. He started, and he played super well. And I, I thought, man, I'm going to – I actually pull into the box. I got a box. bunch of his stuff. I'm grading a bunch of his stuff. I think he's oh, a legitimate think, so, like, so scoring less, option. So less – He's on the right team. They're going to be playing uh-huh. in prime time. Zion's on his team. And I think they're going to be a playoff contender. So I think there's some things there that – even. I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm holding him long term. I'm going to grade him. Right. As soon as they get back, sell them graded. Right, but so so listen to what just happened. Like I think some people didn't catch it because it was extremely nuanced. Yep. But I caught it in time and know that we're doing a podcast. So let's explain it. So you said, I pulled a lot. And I go, oh, yeah, that's cool. And then you said, I'm going to grade a lot. I go, oh, that's interesting. Like a lot of people are like, that means something. You know what I meant when I yep. went, oh, that's interesting. That means I knew – that you were taking a longer position on him. Yep. Maybe not a super long position, yep. but a long enough position where I, I – because grading takes time. Yep, six months. And so what you're saying is I think he's going to do well long enough for me to get my cards back, and he's still going to be relevant. And to that point, you know what else I noticed? Because of him specifically, I went and looked at what was graded of his. Okay, not much. And PSA 10 silvers were selling for like $200. Yeah. And part of that – you know what that tells me is I think – grading almost any rookie, any rookie silver yeah. that's gradable. Or maybe in the top 20 picks. Actually has value. And the reason is because if you have one graded yeah. and he has any inkling of playing well, you're holding. People aren't going to – some people want to literally buy that card and flip it. Right. They're not going to then – they're not going to wait the six months and send it. They're going to go find it at a card show, submit it. And so if you for, have yeah. – now, now you're going to miss on some of them. Oh, but if you can get, But if you can get one guy like him – that even you move them at two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. it literally pays for you to have graded five guys. Yeah, you know? and he, he and we're talking like he's going from like forty to two hundred. Yes, you know, like his base. I want to say his base PSA tens. I'll tell you right now. I'm actually. I know I got a couple of his base prisms. His silver PSA tens are at two hundred and sixty five dollars. Uh, I'm not. I'm not along on this guy. I'm going to list him tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. I mean, his his stuff is hot. So he's number three. Number two is Terrence Mann. Oh, really? Yep. And number one is Carson Edwards. We were just talking about him today, the the Celtics. Yeah, I just guard. looked him up. He didn't look like he, he – so he's a big mover, but price-wise he's still not a no, lot. He's Yeah, his, his – Because his, uh, I got a green his, prism rookie. His uh, raw Evan. silvers are selling for about um, – only like 10 12 bucks, I think. But yeah. But I think they were significantly lower. No, that's what I mean. They were, they were basically commons. Yeah, I they mean. were basically – So that's what we're saying. So these are the biggest percentage movers. Yep. So if you're a very cheap card, that doesn't mean that the card is a big card yet. Which is awesome, actually. Think about that. That means here's what this is. This is like this is a penny stock. Yeah. Versus LeBron or Mahomes being a blue chip S and P right. 500. Like you're already. I think I'm a seller on Edwards. I mean, he gives me that Spud Web vibe, where it's kind of cool, but like. You like that he's out of the Big Ten though, Purdue. Boy, yeah, Brown. but I'm I mean, a, he's yeah. a tiny dude. Is he? Yeah, he's little, little. Isn't he six foot or something? I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, six foot in basketball is little, but I he yeah. might he might not even be six foot. I mean, Allen Iverson. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll not, uh, say Carson no, no, Edwards. No, I'm not and, comparing. <laughs> I mean, Carson Edwards is five uh, eleven. Yeah, right yeah, there. he's under six foot. I mean, no, pick. granted, granted, I, I'm not saying he is tiny. I'm you just saying hilarious? he plays he's, the game with giants. He's literally, he's not even playing for the Celtics. Yeah. He he he's literally on the main red claws. Like the D League. So why? That is so bizarre to me. So why are they moving up? Yeah, they, I looked him up literally he's last up, week. He's up 160 percent. Number one movement. Is he doing well in the? Yeah, well, he's now good. he's um. Well, I, I, wonder, I think he's got COVID or something. Health and safety protocols. Who? Edwards didn't play in Sunday's game against the Knicks. You know he's not even up with them. He's, yeah, but no, I mean he's day to day health and safety protocols. Right. So, well, okay, I don't know, so something's happening with him. As far as sales volume by player, the one movement this week I see, the only guy 
that cracked the top ten who is not on here, Josh Allen. Everybody else is the same basketball player. Same, so literally, same the the one guy who's actually moving both volume and price at a significant enough level to go from right. off the top ten to middle of the pack, right. he's six right now, is Josh Allen. Well, that makes sense. Makes no, sense. No, yeah. I did see. Um, I watch, What's the baseball card investor's name again? I keep forgetting his name. Uh, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Yep. So uh, one of his videos popped up, and he did a video saying that, um, which was interesting, about Tiger Woods. Yeah. And he was making. I watched the, the documentary first he, one last night. Well, he was making the claim that the that it's uh, uh, not going to be the same as the Last Dance because one of the movies is kind of a hit job. And it's not going to last as long. Well, I'll say this much. It's not painting Tiger as perfect. Right. Which is fine. But, but it's also – Jordan, they kind of were. But it's also painting it, – it's it's actually bringing you into, like, how crazy his dad was. Yeah. Like his dad was – Well, his dad was dedicated. <laughs> he was over the top. Like, he, yeah. They, they interviewed one of his teachers growing up, and his teacher told a story of her begging Tiger's dad – to let him do something else besides just golf. Now, I think Tiger wanted to do some golf, but I think his dad didn't give another option. No, dude, so, it, like, like um, They show footage of Tiger swinging a golf ball I, I've seen that one, at yeah. two years old, and he's striking the ball better than I've ever struck it. So, like, yeah. at two years old, who's making a decision to golf? Well, no, but, like, this would be, like, uh, it's recess, and then Tiger's out there doing his swings. It's like, hey, do you want to play kickball? He's like, nah, my dad will get mad. <laughs> Literally, they tell a story where it said the mom, Tiger's mom, said he he wouldn't stop swinging his golf club. Yeah. Like, in their garage, they had, like, a little practice oh, yeah. area. He would not come in and eat. So literally, she started feeding him in between swings. Just like so he throwing would, chicken nuggets no, at no, his no. face. No, no, no. So he would take a swing. She would feed him. <laughs> a he would, and football? then he would swing again. Like literally, the so, guy would. By not, the way, Clint goes. He's so hard. In between, he would feed him, and then he put his hand towards me, like he's like giving me a spoon of soup. Yes, I'm, I'm feeding John right now. <laughs> feed me. Wow, that's so, nuts. So, uh, and so Tiger was dedicated as well. It wasn't just his dad was. He, he but he it. bought into what his he dad was selling. It. He bought into it. Yeah. That. One of my favorite lines is, I wish I could remember what movie. Oh, this is from Friends. Um, uh, it, when people go, um, um, you, you say you make a claim and somebody says, well, I don't buy it. And then you go, it's not for you to buy, sir. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not selling anything. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> I'm not asking you to buy it. It's, which which to, we've talked about this numerous times, but this reinforces the Josh Allen move, reinforces to me the value of – investing in unopened product yeah because if you have 2018 football mm -hmm. you've literally gone on this roller coaster of baker mayfield yep. lamar jackson now josh allen all of the same draft class yep. like literally each of those guys has done their job in driving the value of the product with each year it being a different guy everyone's chasing. right right and then yeah. well what, what do we got lamar josh and who was the third guy um Baker. Baker and started so all, out. All quarterbacks. So yeah. Baker started out the strongest. That summer he was really, they were really high on him, which to be honest, he's played, I think I think Baker played better than Lamar in this playoffs. Yeah, so I think he did. In, in, I think he played better this year. I mean, Lamar's I mean, not a good passer. We know that. Now let, let, and let, if let, a team can stop him running. Let, let's know. do a little exercise. I just thought of it. Let's say we're in the exact same market we're in. Yep. And it's the 1999 draft class. Of football? Football. Donovan McNabb. Yep. Dante Culpepper. Edrin James. Well, Edrin James. Achilles right. Smith with a big time prospect. Um, Cade McNown for the Bears. Yep. Uh, I'm missing somebody. I like the 98 class a little better. For uh, but in terms <laughs> know, of quarterbacks, it was like, it was not, it was yep. like five first Tim, rounders. Tim Couch. And then um, Tim Couch is number one pick. Tim, Tim Couch. And then um, there was, I think Dante was a second round pick. No, he was the first one. Uh, somebody was a second round pick. So I'll pull it up. What would the prices be with that? With six quarterbacks, I believe it's six quarterbacks. Um, I mean, it would be nineteen twenty basketball for football. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then Edron James on top of that. Yeah. So of all the guys, I think that you listed is Edron James the only Hall of Famer. Yeah, McNabb I mean, looked McNabb's like he was going it. to be. 
Oh, Ricky Williams is in that class, too. Oh, Ricky Williams. Backs. Holy smoke, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as running backs, he was the Heisman Trophy winner. Yep. So, here's the – so, number one pick was Couch. Number two was Donovan McNabb. Number three was Achilles Smith. Number four was Edron James. So, I mean, you had some – and those those guys were monster prospects. Let's be honest. Like I, I wouldn't say McNabb was a. Oh, Champ Bailey, the Hall of Famer. Champ Bailey, thank you. Oh, Tory Holt too. He's a Hall of Famer, number six. No. Yes. Close. No. He's not in the Hall. No, he's he not in the be. Hall. He should be. I think he will. Because uh, Isaac Booth got in before, and Isaac Booth was gonna get let's in before. Let's look at Tory Holt's numbers. Greatest show on turf. He's yeah, Tory Holt's got thirteen thousand yards and nine hundred twenty receptions. I mean. Seventy-four touchdowns. He's close. I mean, there are people yeah. who think Tory Holt. Is better than Isaac Bruce. Those people are wrong, but he's almost as good as Isaac Bruce. Almost as good. So you ha- here's the Hall of Famer. So it's Edron James and, and Champ. And Champ, Champ and you just got, got David in. David Boston. He was a massive. Oh, David Boston prospect. was a big prospect. Chris McAllister, for a defensive back, was a very collectible defensive back. Yep. Dante Culpepper was 11. Cade yep. McNown. Uh, Javon Kurth was actually a selling and, defensive player. And Javon Kurth could make the Hall of Fame. He had. 150 sacks or something, yep. career-wise. Um, Antoine Winfield. For Antoine, the, well, he wasn't collectible yeah, in 99, no. so we're trying to think about – Oh, Andy Kathamoyer was a collectible defensive player mm-hmm. uh, out of Ohio State. Linebacker you. But, yeah, that, that first round draft class was insane. Oh, Jim Kleinsauce, the second round, what's up? Uh, yeah, that would be a little local flavor right there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that would be the 1920 – basketball of football if we had that draft class today i mean boxes what yeah. do i got what do i got uh i got blasted for 95 they'd be 250 yeah like easy. well let me say this though where do you rank this year's quarterback class compared to some of these previous ones like 18, i mean there's a lot of quarterbacks there's a lot of quarterbacks who are actually positioned to play pretty right but quickly. i don't and we don't even know like a guy like Jacob Eason where he's if he's going to be right. The and then in Jordan Love. Yep, Jordan Love. Down but the road. but that happens in every draft class. Yep. There's always guys who don't play right away. I don't. I know we had gotten to it a little bit about uh, Joe Burrow, and you said that he was like one of the most hyped draft picks in recent years. I don't yep. think that's true. I think he was Joe, the number one pick. Joe Burrow had the best college season as a quarterback no ever. fine but i'm just talking about just pure media pure like i don't the think national championship won the heisman number one pick I mean, from from just a pop culture standpoint and i mean and this might be because of alternative you don't media follow now. college football though, i don't yeah, i don't so, so let's, but that's but yeah, that's what i'm yeah, saying yeah. if i don't notice it it didn't crack your the radar. way i yeah. do with lebron james i don't fall you know prep basketball but no, like right. you know he's on the cover of sports illustrated as a high school player um, I, I don't know if that had the hype, whereas Couch had that hype. Like, I knew Couch had that hype. Um, Culpepper was a guy I didn't... Comparing Tim Couch to Joe Burrow, have we lo- have we gone off the reservation? No, I'm, no, I'm talking about okay. hype. I'm not talking about talent. <laughs> Tim Couch. But but if you talk about that, like, Culpepper yeah. was the guy when the Vikings took him, they think... Uh, I remember uh, draft night, they were like, uh, I think the Vikings got the best quarterback of the draft. At 11, but yeah. McNabb had massive hype behind him. David Boston had massive hype. Really, uh, Edwin James wasn't. Like, I remember, I was yeah. buying, I mean, I was in college. I was yep. buying, I was going to shows and What's stuff. Edwin James was in a massive This is deal. interesting to me. Ricky Williams won the highest. Ricky game. Williams and was actually, a massive deal. But, but Ricky Williams was drafted after Edwin James. He was not the first running You know what's funny there. about that? Is funny, Ricky Williams was far more collected than Edwin James was. By, and yeah, it wasn't even close. Yeah. wasn't even close. Yeah. Edwin J- uh, Ricky Williams was probably more popular than Tim Couch. Yep. James though had a better career, yeah. Which now he's probably worth more. There's still some. Ricky oh yeah, Williams only because yeah. there's not a lot. I mean, yeah. there's no real reason to collect um, Ricky, uh, yeah, Ricky Waters. Ricky Waters. Was Ricky Waters. I like Ricky Waters. Um, so yeah, to to your point, um, I'm curious to see ten years from now of these quarterback classes yeah. who's still around because we have so many of them. 18, 17, 17, 18, 19. You have literally fifteen possible starters right. out of thirty-two teams. Let's understand teams. something. The, Coming out the in, in the hobby, it's only the best handful that becomes super hobby yes. relevant. Yes, you can't have fifteen super relevant quarterbacks. Right. Yes, it's, it's never, it's happened. never happened. No, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something will change, but I don't think so. Well, and, and right so, now, right now we're experiencing the turning of the tide because yeah. you have what do you have? You have Breeze, Brady's Rivers, on his way up. Brady. Rodgers is a few years behind him. Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger. 
uh, those guys are all going out. Yes. Manning just went out. Manning just went and out. And literally, you have this whole new crop coming in yeah. behind them. And you have this massive gap, right? You have the early 2000s. Brady was in 2000. Yep. Then you had Breeze 01. 01. And then 04 was the best class 05 probably ever. 05 and Rodgers. Yep. And then 05. And then you have this gap. Yeah. And then you start with, like, Mahomes, really. So, right? really, I mean, you I mean, you can argue two things. One, even with that gap, the vast majority of the uh, quarterbacks are not going to be highly collected. Because it's going to be who wins Super Bowls. But right? you're making the claim that maybe more than normal will be just because all the superstar goats are leaving, yep. leaving, Somebody leaving the football. Somebody has to become the face in the NFL that's going to take Brady's. Right. And I, I think that's Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, it's Mahomes. It's not – Josh Allen. I think that's the safest route. Now, if Josh Allen wins a Super Bowl this year, no, still he's, Mahomes. No, it's still Mahomes, but he's elevated himself to another level yeah, below yeah, yeah. Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, he's above he's, everybody else. But he's above Baker, Lamar. He's above, you know. Yeah, I still Herbert. think. I think if Allen wins the Super Bowl to start the football season, I think it's still going to be Mahomes than yes. Lamar. No, 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 no. You think done. Allen's going to pass Lamar? Oh, gosh, Lamar? Yeah. He's already passed In him. In the hobby? He's already passed him. Think so? Lamar's been tanking for five, six months in price. And he had oh, a little okay. bump when he won this first game. They had a little bump. And okay. then now I think – I actually think Lamar and Baker are about the same level. Oh, wow. I think Lamar – I don't think Baker's getting a ton of hobbies. B- Baker's wow. come up and Lamar's come down. Okay. So and then who, who else might, be, might challenge Mahomes? Well, I mean – so you're arguing at Allen's too. I, I'm arguing it's got to be Allen. And the, and the I mean, new, I mean, the new guy. Well, we're not I'll arguing over Rodgers. If Herbert and the Chargers get better yeah. as a team, maybe not he, Herbert. No, it's not there yet. You kind of got to at least be the playoffs the year yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think Mahomes is still the face. I mean, by far. Now I'll say this much: I am not sure if Rodgers wins a Super Bowl this year that he doesn't become the intermediate face of the NFL between Brady and Mahomes. Couldn't he be? Couldn't he be the guy? Like he's already a Hall of Famer. He now is. If he wins again, he's multiple MVPs, multiple Super Bowls, yeah, yeah. and he's in his prime. He's balling. I think he's just too old. He's thirty six. I think. Right? I think. I think. To be the faith, you have to be young. Okay. I don't think Joe Montana with the Chiefs could ever be the faith of that. So Rodgers kind of missed his window. Basically, he never yeah, quite he, overtook Brady. Right. And he was always just kind of the next in line behind Breeze. Now, I will tell you Manning something about um, Aaron Rodgers uh, in terms of uh, collectability and and um, just being out there. We yeah. talked about a little bit about A-Rod, how he does a lot of social media and stuff, and yep. he got his face out where Barry Bonds, like, uh, where did he live? Yeah, does he, he live, you know? Yeah. Um, is, uh, who is the – Pat McAfee. Yeah, so uh, he has a very, Colts. very good podcast. I've been Super watching. well followed, yeah. Really well followed. Very interesting. On, and uh, Aaron Rodgers goes on a show once a week. Nice. And they do a very long segment with him. Cool. And so that's one of those things where he's if being you more pay accessible. attention, like he's out in, non, in a non-football way. Yeah. Now, the thing about Aaron Rodgers is I don't know if I like him any better after no. watching that. He's very – He's a prima donna. Yeah. I mean, he, he I, I guess doing those interviews, he seems a little more human. Like he's not the gargoyle. I'm not, I've I'm, ever I'm seen not a fan of how he doesn't. If so, if you're a quarterback and you take the credit, you also need to be able to take the blame. Right. And he's done a really poor job at. He's thrown other people under the bus. He hasn't really owned when yeah. he's played. Well, LeBron James does that too. He's always like every time a teammate is like, "What? What are you doing?" Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like stop complaining. It's like you, you need to cover for those guys. Like they're right. going to make mistakes, and so are you. But you're. The, I don't. Yeah. I don't know if that's the issue. I think it's just kind of a personality thing. Like sure. you don't. He doesn't do a segment. And you're like, oh, he seems like a cool guy. Yeah, like, he seems like he's. I don't even know if real, I'd yeah. want to. Hang- I mean, I definitely wouldn't want to hang out with him because right. I don't hang out with dirty Packers. Right. But yeah, especially. But like, yeah. if you played for like the Bills, right. like I'd hang out with Josh Allen. Sure. But like after watching him, I'm not like, oh, I'd, I'd hang. Out. I, I, he's getting a bad rap. He's kind of a cool guy. He's yeah. not really a cool guy, but he is out there. Sure. He's out there more. His face is out there. There's a loyal. Well, fan I'll base say this much, and this him. and this to me is a litmus test of popularity. Outside of your nuanced like football fan, right? Who's on every ad with yeah. Mahomes? They're yeah. the State Farm has said mm-hmm. these are the two guys who are the face of, and and I'd say Rodgers is in as many ads as anyone. Yes, Brady's actually in. Far and that less, would be like you know. the Jordan effect, where yep. Jordan was in every. Bo Jackson, Bo yep. Jackson still gets hobby love. One mm-hmm. because he's awesome, but think about a guy who never built up any career numbers. He's not a Hall of Famer because he got yeah. hurt too early, but. 
he was as advertised as anybody. And you, many and he, people and argue the hobby. He's still many relevant. people argue he might have been the greatest athlete ever. He might have been the greatest athlete. Ever. I, 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 I believe in that. I actually argue Deion Sanders above him, but that's they're no. different players. No, but yeah. only because only because if you have Bo Deion Jackson might, running down the field and Deion Sanders trying to tackle, Deion Sanders would be like a pancake on the field. Yeah, but Deion would literally, literally, he's probably the greatest corner ever. Yeah. He he might be the fast one. Of the I fastest love Deion players Sanders, ever. by the way. I'm not and so they're Deion different. Sanders. One's power, one's speed. Yeah. I mean, literally, Deion locked down the half of the field. Like literally, but I think. Couldn't... But I think the Bo Jackson versus Deion Sanders because they're in yep. the same sport. I think it's so easy. Bo yep. Jackson running down the field, the defensive player trying to tackle him. Yep. Deion Sanders is not tackling Bo Jackson. Yeah, it's but if you're, but if, but if Bo Jackson hundred out of hundred, he's tackling him. If, if Bo Jackson's going out for a route, Deion's pick sixing. Maybe, it too, maybe. Right? So I mean, that's, uh, although although is that Bo Jackson's fault or that's the quarterback throwing it fault? You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would but, say. Ball. But then, if you look at baseball, Dion probably had a better career in baseball. So then you have the you have the multiple Ooh, sport. I, I, Dion had better numbers. I mean, let's look well, at well, he let's did, look at but numbers. that's only because Bo didn't play it long enough. Okay, let's look you know at the I mean? batting average. Let's look at Dion versus because because if Bo got hurt so early, that's the problem. Yeah, you know you can't. Um, uh, how do you say you can't? If, if apples okay, so, and oranges so in terms of longevity. Here's Dion's pro his his uh, MLB stats. I look up Bo. Career two sixty three, um, hundred eighty six stolen bases, hundred and sixty eight runs batted in, thirty nine. All homers. right, let's go through it. You 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 at Dion so. Yep. So we're not doing total because the yeah, year to- problem. Yeah, there's just so enough. batting average two fifty for Bo. So he, so Dion's better by thirteen points. Okay, um, home runs are one hundred forty one. Okay, so he has almost three times the home runs. Now, oh, 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 hold on, sorry. How many at bats does Dion have? Um, I don't have that number. Because that's here. that's kind of important. Yeah, let's figure that out. Because if we're talking I'll about I'll anyway. different things, are you looking at baseball reference? Uh, Let's try to get a sponsor for the podcast from Baseball Reference, Uh a website I use every day for baseball cards. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Uh, When you're looking up and investigating, you know, cards to invest in and stuff, baseball reference, pro football reference, hockey database, whatever, Google it. (laughs) Just reference hockey. It's got a weird title. And um, what am I missing? Basketball? Basketball reference. Yeah. Just looking up the numbers and figuring out like where they're at, like yep. oh Miguel Cabrera, where the at in his total home runs. Yep. You know, you can go all sorts so, of websites, but this is let's the way look to at, go. So Dion's WAR is five point five, um, twenty one twenty three total at bats, two thousand one twenty three. That's it. Actually, we can compare F- them pretty F- well. Five hundred and fifty eight hits, thirty nine homers, two sixty three. Listen to this: Bo Jackson has more at bats than Dion. How many is he have? Twenty. Three ninety three, twenty four hundred, so, almost three hundred more. So, so Dion's All right, average, let's do this yeah, then. Okay, yep. two fifty yep. for Bo. What is what is Dion? Two sixty three. Okay, um, thirty nine. Two hundred, two hundred walks. Um, we're going backwards. We're going. Why don't I have walks? I'm Come on, Clint, get with the program. Yeah, baseball, you right? need to get what it together. Is, walks, career. It's called BB. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Evan's laughing. Where's the the t- baseball guys are I laughing. I don't know why they add them up here. Okay, here they are. Uh, yeah, you got to get to 159. All right, so Bo, uh, Bo's got more walks. Yep. Uh, 82 stolen bases. Dion should have them. De- Dion's got him crushed on stolen bases. Stolen bases, we're looking at uh, 186. So 100 more. Um, home runs, 140. Which speaks, to, which speaks to power versus speed. Yeah, Dion's fair, faster. Fair Bo, Bo so 141 home runs and how many? 39. Yeah, yeah. okay, so that's. So we're, that's the now here's the thing, though. Bo is fast where Dion doesn't have any power. So Bo's got steals. Yeah, but Bo Dion, knows I mean, steals. Dion had 39 homers. No, right, it's but I'm nothing, t- but it's 30 know, home yeah. runs versus you know 140. 140. But then Bo Jackson's got 82 steals. It's not like Bo Jackson wasn't fast. I mean, he's got double. Yeah, Dion's got double. Yeah. Um, and then, well, let's talk about okay, what's on base percentage? Well, here's uh. On base percentage would be three oh nine. So he's got Dan's got him. He's got three nineteen. And then um, RBI or four fifteen. RBI how many? Four fifteen. Okay, he's got him in RBI. It's hundred and sixty eight. But Dan sixty eight. Well, well, we gotta do but, runs for Dan. But Dion r- runs three three oh eight. Three forty one. Bo Jackson has more he runs. Has more runs. Okay. Even which is. I mean, even in baseball, it's like pretty close. I don't know. If, I don't. And obviously, Dion was a far better football player because he played longer. Yeah, he's maybe the. I mean, he's in the Hall and that's game, the one you know, where so. we where we yeah. really can't. Base, I, yep. I'm surprised that we can really compare them. 
Now, here's the thing, though. Yep. Almost 500 of that bat, so 20% came after the injury. Yep. So that might skew it a little bit. Although he did hit six, 29 home runs after the injury. So. And I'll say this. Bo never played in a baseball and football game on the same day. Deanne. No, that was that pretty was cool. Pretty Did, awesome, didn't he come in? Didn't Deanne come in a helicopter? Yeah, they helicoptered him. They the chopper. Helicopter. They chopper. This guy's just a get, what a beast. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Literally, goes prime like get time. in the chopper. Get in the <laughs> chopper. He li- and it was literally like a World Series game. He yeah, literally went from yeah, yeah. It was like because it was fall because they, they were in the NFL season and they were you know the Braves were still. What was that like ninety four? Yeah, I, I remember watching the ESPN thirty for thirty. And I love oh, it. Nuts. I just fell in love with Dion. Yeah, I, that's, Dion. I, I I love both these guys, but I I would say Bo Jackson over Dion. What do you think, Evan? Bo Jackson or Dion? Baseball Dion, wise, he says Dion. Dion baseball wise, baseball only. He says Dion. Oh, now he's thinking. Wow! All right, two against one. No, we, the one thing we didn't bring up is defensively. What do we, I mean? Do we have okay? What's we're both center okay, fielders. Hold on, hold on, give me D, what's Bo's war. Career war. Oh, right? 5. oh 5. 8.3. Okay, got so he's him got him. He's got him. War. Oh, smoked, but I mean, well, three games for twenty four hundred at bats. I mean, that's pretty. Because line, yeah. war and longevity is a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So if they both have short careers, like yeah. three three wars, yeah. pretty. Yeah. All right. So I problem I. I would say Bo was flashier, Bo had which more is weird because Deion's which, like the flashiest but, but, guy on the no, planet. No, but Bo had more power, whereas Deion had more speed. No, but we're talking yeah. about fielding now. Like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Flash- yep, yep. Now, here's the thing. like the, uh, That All-Star game where Bo Jackson runs up the wall, Yeah, I, I remember watching that game on the co- – like, I can see myself in the third person watching the game freaking out. Yeah. It was just that was like, the greatest thing I've ever like, seen. Who is this guy? Um, let, let's just do real quick uh, errors. So – so they're both center fielders. I mean, Bo played left and right as mm-hmm. well. Um, 44 errors. Um, so 44 errors. Or um, 962 fielding percentage, which doesn't seem low. So <laughs> make it Evan look at the baseball reference because uh, the basketball guy can't figure it out. Would you say you're a basketball guy or a football guy? Football. Yeah. You're a football guy? Yeah, they're not. I don't have it here. Oh, wait, do I have to? It's, you got to scroll to, down. Oh, it's in a separate area. Yeah, yeah, defense separately. Value, postseason batting. Oh, field, standard fielding. What are we looking at? You're looking for E for error. Uh, total <laughs> errors, career. Yeah. Um, 22 errors. Yeah, had less errors than Bo. And then fielding percentage is 982. He's got better fielding percentage than Bo. Yep. So, Dion made up for. I mean, they're different. It's hard. Yeah, they're different players. They're different definitely. players in both sports. But you, you know, know what, I mean? though, we're talking about two guys. I mean, I mean, one guy again, Hall of Famer in football, so it's yeah. kind of hard to really compare. But right. two guys who are just like super collectible, super collectible. super collectible because they, uh, their personality, yep. commercials, the multi-sport, multi-sport. Thing. I mean, just, you know, so. um, although if you ever want to look at a really good uh, YouTube video, yeah, it's um, Bo Jackson explaining who he was. Uh, who's the guy in the White Sox who brought his kid? Then he decided to retire. Not Canerco. It was uh, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Eaton. No, Adam. No, may, no. no um, that sounded right. But yeah, so he, he his kid did a video of him talking yep. to his kid, and he's explaining to him. He's like eleven, who he is. So he's like, he's like, yeah, I, I don't know how he started, but he's like, you know, like football, and he's like, yeah, and he's like, you know how you know the Heisman, Adam LaRoche, Adam LaRoche. He you. goes, you, you know, like the Heisman, like the best like yeah. college football player in the country. Yeah, and he goes, yeah, he goes, I won that. This kid looks so unimpressed. He's just <laughs> like, oh, okay. And he's like, you know, like I played for, for like the Raiders and the White and, and the Royals in the same year. And the guys just like, and this kid just he's like he's like kind of like playing with his glove and his ball, looking at him like, who are you again? He's like, no, seriously, I'm a big deal. <laughs> but he was he was no, he was you. so patient with them. That's and hilarious. you read the comments and all the comments are like, come on, kid, don't you know who you're talking to? <laughs> But it, it's a great video. Just put it like Bo Jackson explains who he is or that something is like so that. Funny. It's a great video. How deep are we, Evan? What, what is the deal? I have got a clock on me that is set to 90 minutes, and wow. I know uh, we're ready to wrap it up. Do you have anything else, Clint? 
No, man. What is another great week? I'm excited for you know the next couple weeks of football. Well, yep. the next week, and then we have a break for a week. Yeah, and then, and then uh, we're the we're heading down to Iowa. I'm actually going to close the shop Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, we're going to go down Clint and uh, convince me to go down do to some Dine gambling, Joe's, bet some sports, and watch some watch some Super Bowl. And then and then we literally the end of the Super Bowl marks a distinct mm-hmm. season shift for sports cards. Where now baseball becomes I'm already seeing base, are you yeah, I, baseball. Yeah, I had Bo Bichette selling yep. this week. I had Five Guerrero, did you hear the news on him? No. He supposedly dropped a bunch of pounds. He's he's oh, in very shape good. and like there's a lot of excitement about Vlad him. Vlad Guerrero so. is a guy I've had two conversations with customers who are like, Oh, what do you feel about him? I'm like, You realize how young he still is? Super young. He shouldn't even be called up yet. No, the fact like, he's up and, giving up on Vlad yeah. is weird. No and not only that, the big concern is I think was his weight. And, yeah. And like, that's a really good sign. He has plenty the of power. Sano, yeah. yep. The Sano, the Sano effect. Or, yeah. or, or, no, no, Injuries. you could call it the Miggy effect, but it didn't really hurt Miggy. No, no. You know, Miggy's just hitting bombs left and right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for that kind of shift, and hopefully I'm going to get down and maybe be able to go to some spring training games in March. Oh, My really? parents are going to be down in Florida. They're oh, in Fort cool. Myers every year. So oh, they, right they go the every road. year. Yeah, have, they, you, have you done it before? Yeah, so they go February and March. They're there all February, March. No, right with COVID, there. though, I mean, are you going to be able to – have you ever done autographs or you, don't, you just yeah. watched again? No, I've done. Yeah, I got to meet Tory Hunter and a lot of – so oh, back cool. when my dad, uh, you know, when Molitor was still playing, we'd go watch him. and we'd, Oh, yeah, fair enough. Introduce I actually got and, a really good story to end a podcast. It's, it's, not, it's not that good. It's good. But it's, it's, it's like a whatever story. So my brother was in uh, Big Brothers um, – Big Sisters. Yes. Or whatever that yep. organization – White and here, you know, it was when I was in college. I go, "Oh, yeah, big brother." He goes, "Yeah," and I go, "Yeah, maybe you should have practiced a little when you know we were growing up." I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> so I uh, he had an event at the at the twin game where yep. you like winter twin game, and then after the game, he got to hang out and like play on the field, play catch and stuff. Sure. And the play, so it's this little tiny thing of. Um, so you all, we got a team set. It was a 2000, the victory, upper deck victory twin set. Okay. 2001, 2000, something like that. Yep. And, um, so the, the twin players coming into the stands, we're sitting in the stands yep. and they're signing autographs on the cart. Nice. And, but they were in their regular clothes. So you didn't know who was who. Right. This kid, it, he must've been 10. Like he doesn't yep. know. He kept giving the Tory Hunter card to Jack Jones, oh and Jack Jones like that ain't me, man. And then the kid looked looked at the card and goes, and the bad dude was like, it ain't me, man. Nice. <laughs> and then Tory came and was like, nah, that's me. And he, he signed it for him. And like, I just thought that was hilarious. It's, the right without guy. the uniform on, sometimes it's a little hard to tell. Well, and baseball players specifically, like... And didn't have the hat on, yeah. Like, like, yeah. If he just, doesn't have his number and his name on his back. How dare he not identify himself to me? <laughs> but this kid, this kid literally, I'm watching, I'm like th- four seats away. He says, that ain't me, man. And he looks at the card, and he looks at him, and he's like, nah, you're wrong. And he hands it back to him. You know what's funny? That reminds me of a guy... With a you know, by brothers. the way, I'm sitting there going, that's Jack Jones, man. Like, like I, I knew who it was. You got, got a Hall of Fame vote. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a customer who used to go to the um, St. <clears throat> Paul just outside Excel. Yeah. Every, every morning the away team comes and does a skate. Yeah. And then they walk back to their hotel room, which is right across. There's a little park behind the Excel. And he would go out there every day. With pucks of that team, yeah, and get guys to sign them. And he said, "Got that the, big lot that you had." <clears throat> yeah, it was a no. big lot we bought. And uh, he said it was really funny because literally he would have guys sign the pucks, and he wouldn't know who they were until he went back and, and he had to looked up the autograph because like he, autograph. he didn't recognize them by face. Right. Like literally, he'd recognize like one guy, like McDavid or Crosby or right. something. And then the rest of them, it's like uh, uh, I don't know who enough. you are, but I'm gonna figure it out. No, you <laughs> bought two collections like that, so that was. Where a guy got them because um, they yeah, we were about three hundred pucks signed pucks. Right? Wasn't there a, that was but that basketball collection you got that was kind of the same thing. Similar worked type deal, but all signed. Across, how did that story go? He worked across the street. So he worked downtown and he knew the hotel where the away team stayed. Yeah, and so he'd recognize their bus. And he would like up, take a for, break, and he'd like pull over, and he always would have new brand new basketballs right and like he'd have like stacks of cards and stuff yeah. and if he had the player he'd have him sign the card if he didn't he'd have him sign a ball sure and so he got he had some epic balls he had 35 i mean durant he had a dirk and whiskey didn't dirk you? jason yeah. kidd alan iverson mcgrady duncan oh, i mean he had 
He had the who's who's. And then I have like a big listing on Scottie eBay Pippen. called the 10K Lake Collection. It's all from that guy. Yes. Um, collection. It's all here with cards. It's all. It's on, mostly o two o three top. Yep. There was a stretch there for probably two years where he was getting them. Yep. That's Which awesome. Which is fun, man, to get that kind of stuff. And I, I actually just shipped out three pucks to a guy a couple days ago. Oh, very so cool. Those pucks are still going. <laughs> it's yeah. like It's been three years. Well, it's one of those things where you buy a collection that's so big, it yeah. t- literally takes years to liquidate it. And the the cream of the crop sells right away. And right, then right, now right. you're left with guys that. And you saw them aren't even still playing once right. in a while. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, I think we're good. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, Please share the podcast uh, with any collector that you know. Um, Subscribe, and uh, thanks a lot.